All right, welcome back, everybody, to another session of Curion. Uh, I am your dungeon master, and this is a hoot nanny. Uh, it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, welcome back to Curion. We're back again for another session this week. But before we get going, I have a few announcements. The first and most important of which is that our lamentably missing warlock has a birthday today. So, happy birthday, Lydia. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Uh, she'll be back with us soon uh, after high season calms down and after our brave party has saved her. But everyone go wish her a happy birthday. Uh, half ass Hermit. Still a great name. On Twitter, go say happy birthday. She got given a sword today, which I think is a really bad decision, but it's a thing that exists now, so... That's a very good birthday present, though. Mm. It's, it's a good decision for Lydia. It's a bad decision for anyone around Lydia. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Glamdring as well, so it's a pimpin' sword. It's Gandalf's pimpin' sword. It's a good job she's in Scotland, and we're not. Yeah, that's not going to stop her. I mean, we won't be in danger unless we let them marry. Yeah, I don't think anything can stop her at this point. No. No. So... But could anything really stop it beforehand? True. As well as that, though, uh, we do have some of our usual announcements to the other people in the party that uh, aren't Lydia. Tomorrow, I will be on Wizards and Wardrobes at 6 p.m. BST. That's 1 p.m. EST over on Scraticus's channel, twitch.tv forward slash Scraticus. Is it Scraticus or Scraticus Academy? It's just Scraticus, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'll be there playing Rapture, uh, the Tiefling, and. Uh, then on Wednesday, Bike Club is back right here at the same time as Kurion is now right here, uh, where you can join myself Jamie, and Jamie, uh, as well as Lydia, she will be there, uh, and Marissa, as we adopt half of Barovia. Oh, it's not just me. And me. I'm the DM. <laughs> it's your channel. It's a given you're there. Is it? Yeah, Don't feel good, does it, Caesar? No. And Susie is the dungeon master. I was getting to that bit. Uh huh. I was. All right. Come at me. Uh, and then after that, on on Wednesday, no, on Thursday, uh, Susie is again DMing on uh, Encounter Roleplay. She's DMing the Order, and that's at 10 p.m. BST, 5 p.m. EST or EDT. EDT right now. Uh, so that is a viewer game on Encounter Roleplay. So if you want to sign up for that, go to the Encounter Roleplay Discord, uh, which can be found on their channel, and sign up, and you will get in a game with her and other people. One of them is Mancunian, though, so... Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, and then on Fridays, because every weekday is Roleplay Day, uh, you can join Susie at 6 p.m. BST, 1 p.m. EDT again uh, on the Great Hawk channel for, uh, what's it called? Uprising in the Perrin Lands. Uprising in the Perrin Lands. Okay, I know where that is in Greyhawk. Uh, so you can see Susie in Greyhawk, which is the original setting for D&D and still one of my favorites. So you can go enjoy that. Uh, and also as well, check out Seal the Deal, the DLC to a hat in time out now. Uh, go play that. Uh, and also, if you want, yeah. Uh, and also, go watch Stevie play Magic the Gathering because his decks are literally Satan spawn, and it's amazing. Remember, always leave counter mana up. <laughs> so, uh, that's the end of our announcements. Uh, make sure to check everything of those, everything of those, every one of those out. Uh, it's all a good time all around. But for now, we do have an adventure to get back to. And last time, on Curion, the party found themselves in Typhon, uh, the uh, once uh, dictatorship, but now pirate-free port uh, in the plane of air, the elemental plane of air, where they were looking for a whisper of the wind, one of the four implements of the inner planes needed to save Namari's life. Uh, and they had found uh, a benefactor who'd be willing to get one for them uh, by the name of Unum the Quiet. Uh, and he had tasked them with destroying a group of gargoyles which had been harrying a trade route uh, of Unum's uh, through the plane of air. But before that, they decided they needed to stock up on items a bit. And so making their way to Waladin's Bazaar, 
the great market, which was in the hollowed out uh, center of the mountain that Typhoon was based on, uh, they found Gideon Goodman, uh, the dilapidated tour guide who just wanted to show people around uh, his home. Uh, and they, they set him up with some some business cards, a better name for his tours, gave him a bit more credibility. They had some good food, uh, went and found uh, some a dwarf, who gave a metallurgist who gave them all of their uh, materials needed and his assistant. Um, <laughs> uh, and then they uh, found themselves in the Chime Float where they fought against the Sapphire Gargoyle of Ogamok and his cronies. Uh, before they investigated the strange roar which had echoed out throughout the battlefield uh, when they had been fighting. And at the end of last week's session, they uh, found the source of the roar, a sphinx, who asked them in the completely wrong voice, because I was really tired, because it was almost 1 a.m., what is my name? And that's where we will start once again, as you can see the rest of this figure of this sphinx emerge from within the shadows of this uh, this cave within this floating mass of crystal here. You see a uh, feminine face on this large lion-esque body with these great wings which erupt out the back. Um, they are very defensive in their posture right now. Their one paw is back from the other. They have a furrowed brow on their face and they have just asked you that question. What? Is my name. Um, I think I'm glancing like very quickly between it in like amazement at this big old creature and at Tristan expectantly. Um, at that, would I know anything about sphinxes? Is like any stories or just to uh, get me, any me, better understanding? Give me an arcana check quickly. Arcana. Yes. An arcana. Mm, uh, 15. Uh, I mean, you've heard tales of sphinxes. They're, they're common um, in stories. You've obviously never seen one, um, but they are common in stories and they're known for their riddles. Uh, and uh, this um, this is a gynosphinx. I think that's the right way around. Uh, a gynosphinx. Yes. Kind of sphinx is the the feminine sphinx. Yeah, because is it Andra Sphinx, which is the other one? I believe so. I, I, I don't know which way around they are, but well, there's more than two. But in the in the monster manual, there's two. Uh, but yeah. this this is a, a guy in the sphinx. They were good Yu-Gi-Oh cards back in the day. Is there anything around, um, uh, other than just like cave? Or is there anything that would look like sort of any iconography? around um from what you can see right now uh this is the, the cave is very very dimly lit from the little bit of light which is making it through the obviously the translucent crystal um it's not enough for you to see anything beyond the sphinx you can't see like the basically like the hind legs and everything right now uh but it doesn't appear to be um make a perception check for me just just for posterity so. uh, to clarify what we're thinking the gargoyle definitely didn't tell us its name right it just told us it was looking for a creature Yes, they didn't even say it was looking for Sphinx. So it's just a creature. Uh, 17 on perception. Okay, so what you do see is a whole lot of nothing, actually. There's nothing in here. Hmm. Um, there's no evidence of any food, nothing, no like living area or anything like that. It's just from what you can see very dimly in the light, it's nothing. There's nothing in here. Hmm. Hmm. I just gonna step forward a little bit and ask Is this a given name or a taken name? And it just repeats the question once again. Except this time it says, Do you know my name? No, I do not. You see, posture uh, relaxes slightly and the paw goes back. You see, and it, it, as it 
begins to relax. You see it, it drops slightly and, and they say, good. If you do not know my name, then you are not here to defeat me. Wouldn't dream of it. I am Chisara. That is my name. And I am trapped here. Was it the gargoyles outside? Because uh, we dealt with those. Yes. I was chased here from my home far away by the denizens of Ogamok. He wished to have what I protect, and I could not give it to him. Sorry, I'm just making notes. It's fine. <laughs> Fortunately, Ogamok is slow in his response. It could be many thousands of years before he sends another against me now that you have destroyed the first. There is a saying that though the earth moves slowly, when it does, it creates a great cataclysm. You have prevented that today. However, <laughs> it is simply myself you have saved and not a great world. Well, we're not even from around here, so every little helps on the way, I suppose. Where are you from? Uh, the primes, the prime material. I can uh, see. You do not have the few. Sorry, you have a thread. A thread? A silver thread. Your lifeline. The connection to your reality. Huh. I kind of check myself out looking for a silver thread. <laughs> yeah. Probably a magic thing, Tristan. Idiot. I don't know. I'm just curious. <laughs> it's probably a magic thing. And it's the magic man who's looking. The fucking um, artist can't recognize a metaphor when he sees one. Oof. Which prime is it you are from? Uh, Calrim. Oh, right, that's... Planet. Yeah, carry on. Carry on! Carry on, you say? Mm -hmm. It seems as if we hail from the same place. Uh, is that where you were chased from, then? Yes. And so if we dealt with those that chased you, is it safe for you to return? It will be, yes. I am a guardian of a great secret left by the gods long ago. It's quite the responsibility. It is what I was created to do. Huh. Well... Hopefully we'll be heading back soon, but we've still got another step in our journey to go before we before we can, really. Um, if there's anything we can do to help you get back... I can make my way back myself. I came here. Easily. I have a power and a knowledge far greater than yours at this time. But I sense that perhaps in the future you may outstrip me. I'm flattered, thank you. I can aid you for now, though, as a small thanks. And you see that they're, throughout this, their, their speech seems very stilted and very strange, slightly otherworldly, that they construct sentences and they speak, they speak in a, in a, almost like someone speaking in a, in a language, a different language to their, to their native tongue. You know, they speak slightly stilted and, and have to think through everything they're saying for a moment before they say it. Would you like my gift? Well, we're not in the I, business of saying I would. No. Yes. 
Then you must answer my riddle. Wow. Oh. Okay. Ah, uh, that's okay. Tristan's smart. If you are smart, as your friend says, you should get this one easily. Oh, he's well, really smart. Smarter than the average bear. So. If I have five and you have four, but I give away three, how many remain? I'm 100% staring at Tristan. <laughs> Like, I'm just try is this a trick question or is this just mathematics? Jamie, it's a riddle, so it's a trick. <laughs> hmm. Attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> so, um, they have five, I have four, they give away three, right? Mm hmm. How many remain? Doesn't say who they gave them away to. No, so, so it's either six or nine. Ah, oh, he's nearly got it. I can tell. Just you wait. <laughs> One minute. You see this this great figure of the Sphinx looming down uh, on you now. It's piercing gaze, just staring into you. Uh, it's either six or nine, but I don't know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can see your lips starting to move to see it. Pick another jar. Beyond this one, can I ask a question? Of course. Who are you gifting the three to? A good question. Perhaps one day you will find the answer. Hopefully someday soon. <laughs> Nine. That is correct. <sighs> While three were given away, there were still nine. None were destroyed. So nine remain. <sighs> that was my thinking. That was the train of thought that I was... In the end, it does not matter who you give it to, only that you give. That is the lesson today. Knew he had it. I do not mean that in a sexual way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's how it was taken, to be it, honest. It I was by one that. person. I saw that, Susanna Grace. You've been sending me sculpted dongs on Discord today. This is your fault. It's not my fault. It was Assassin's Creed's fault. All right. I'm going to say thank you for the context. <laughs> yes, you can you can clamber up Apollo's bronze and penis. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know I needed that today. Mm. Now you do. Mm. Good. I can tell that at least you have some semblance of intelligence behind those eyes of yours. I just kind of look at the iron stone that's floating around my head as well. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, three feet away from your head. Don't forget that. Oh, no, it's four feet away from your head. You rolled a four. Yep, it's four. It's way away from me. Probably hitting a lot of people on the way around. Uh, and at this point, Chisara bends down slightly. I... Will allow you to ask for three things of myself. Make your choices, adventurers. I'm just kind of hold a finger up and just like guys group huddle for a sec. Uh any ideas? Um, what what kind of things what do you think they have? Ask us things for? I don't know. I mean I feel like one would be really useful is to like no exactly where we should go in the uh, mental plane of Earth and how to get there. Cause like, because otherwise we keep getting told, like, that's a really bad thing if you don't know where you're going. Mm -hmm. That. Uh, there's a way we can word that to, to only be one thing. Like, how do we get there and where are we going? Right? How do we get to this particular place, maybe? Yes. How do we get to a rumble in the deep? Yeah. yeah. Two more? 
What can a sphinx do for us? I don't I know think, what I do. I think you have to be careful with that first one, because if you say how do I get the rumble in the deep, a correct answer is technically go to the plane of Earth. Or an Adele concert. Yeah. That's yeah. all I think about when I hear it, so... <laughs> Could have had it all. So perhaps, how do I get to a rumbling in the deep within the plane of... Hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. good to be specific with this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of ways that I would... answer it if I wasn't specific and trying to avoid that. Hmm. Okay, so that's so, kind of the first one yeah. set. Well, well, we'll figure out how to word it in a minute. But is it like questions or we ask can, three things? I don't know. What like, you do for us? So maybe yeah. Do. That's the part that was getting me. I don't, I don't know what Sphinxes can do. I mean, it sounded like they didn't have a lot of trouble getting around you know, mm. these places. Mm-hmm. We don't have a route to the the Earth place, right? You might help with that. Yeah, that's what our first question is for. I mean, they might get us there. Oh, they might be able to. You, you, were, you were told the way to get there. Oh, are we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember until he doesn't. You, you were told... Uh, it's just so long. You were told about the uh, Gatestone and the, and Ogamox Moor and... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just a case of knowing exactly where we need to be was the issue, right? Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. Hmm. Uh, I mean, does anyone have any personal issues they want to bring up with the Sphinx? I mean, I only just met them, so... <laughs> I mean, the last, the last thing we helped and set free kind of rocked my world a little bit so you never know what, what they know uh, no I'm pretty good you know all my all my threads tied up huh. well, I've got that fate thing that's fun oh, we should ask about that yeah that's, that's uh, it was... probably something to maybe, maybe bring up yeah like can I fix it hmm that might be good I feel like that's a that's a decent number two question <laughs> Mm-hmm. If you don't mind me mm. selfishly taking a question, I'll, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, to be fair, we didn't mind you selfishly getting your faith eaten alone, so I think we can repay the favor here. Uh, the Sphinx chimes in, evidently being able to hear this entire conversation. Yeah, I don't think we're great with the huddle. No. no. Well, it was more just like, guys, like we need a conversation, and I didn't want to just be impolite. Uh, and she looks down at you all and goes, I believe knowledge is the greatest gift, but it is not the only gift I can give. Mm. Mm. You may ask three things of me, and I am bound to get them. Kind of tough to know what to ask for when we don't know what you can do. Hmm. Wait. If okay, this is a, again. I'm going to make this an obvious side note, so I'm not asking anything. If we can ask of one thing, and Sphinx is bound to get it, why don't we ask for a rumble in the deep? Oh shit. I mean, I, I mean, don't think it wants to be going into the plane of Earth very much. I mean, that's all fine and well, but he started, started interjected with enough information. I think that's possible. But if we do ask for that, that sort of takes away the first question. Or if we ask for that and it's like not possible, then that's going to take up the third question. Or the third thing. So if I cannot do it, it will not use a slot. You're kinder than I am. Hmm. I immediately <laughs> don't give her an out. I... Don't give her an out. Don't give her an out. <laughs> this thing is very confused by this notion. 
the, the notion of kindness is confusing to a creature of this proportion. Well, then, I think that's probably number one. Just mm -hmm. if we don't have to go to another place, potentially get battered by more things. And how many days do we even have left? Quite a few. Yeah, we got. A, we didn't take the long way around. We no. shaved off like 10 days minimum from our fire plane trip. So I think we still have like 28. Unless time has or moved. Or 29. We're not aware of. Uh, it's been... You've been in the planes for six days. Okay, so the, uh, it's going to be 27 days left then? Yeah. Because we took an extra day after getting actually thrashed by trolls. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> after getting battered. <laughs> Yeah, that one time that you made a troll eat another troll. Yeah, this, that did happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's our number one. Mm -hmm. Ask for the item specifically rather than the knowledge. And if, if not, then the knowledge. Yeah. Two, either for your fate to be restored or if it can be. Because if we can ask for things rather than knowledge, then perhaps, you know, going direct is more. Mm -hmm. And for number three, uh, we're going to need a trip back home once we have that rumble. True. And we know this, uh, she comes from our plane. Catch a ride. Catch a ride. Mm. Catch a well, ride. So. A rumble in the deep, your fate, mm. and a trip home. Sounds After we see the other guy, because if we say, "Can we like go home?" and then we oh, yeah. turns out we've forgotten um, the you know uh, the other thing. Well, yeah. yeah, I assume that it's not. Yeah, yeah I assume it's not all just like right now. <laughs> you know, the stack doesn't resolve like that. <laughs> But you need to stop playing magic, man. <laughs> I, was say, I had no idea what was going on there for a minute. I was just smiling and nodding. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I assume even if we do want it to be like, we can be like a, a ride home in a day yeah. or whatever, yeah, you know. The Sphinx, the Sphinx is a sentient creature. It, it can understand, you know, meaning behind words. It's, yeah. yeah. It's not a computer, it's not an algorithm these three things sound good to me. Yes. Your friends like these three things. Who do you like fourth thing? We see you've been searching for. Here's an ad for thing. And may I recommend, the airplane sucks, 20 reasons why. <laughs> well, Ronan, have you figured out a way to word it yet? Or? Oh, I'm not the best on that front. That's That's you. How about, uh, can we have a rolling in the deep, please? Rumbling in the deep. Rumbling, rolling wow. in the deep is would get you an Adele CD. <laughs> Adele sick. just shows up. It would be exceptionally valuable in this world. Right. This disc of strange prismatic coloration. What does it do? Magic. If you have enough CDs and you stick them together, is it a prismatic wall? <laughs> <laughs> if you smash them into a knob. <laughs> It's trying to let people chromatic orb. <laughs> uh, okay, weddings. Um, uh, could you bring us a rumbling in the deep? Mm. Uh, mm. could you restore the missing part of Gun's fate? And can you return us home to Korean? Uh, In a day or so. When our business is concluded? Yes. Ooh, yeah. Good, good, nice, mm. nice. 
I had a brain fart for the majority of it, but I, I was there for the end. It's fine. <laughs> the story by Tristan. <laughs> Autobiography. <laughs> I was kind of present for the last part, but... I was there for the end. The rest was a blur. So is, is, does that seem... Yeah. Seems I'm okay with that three. All right. Okay, then. Um... Chai, what was her name again? I didn't write. Chi Sara. Chi Chi Sara. C H I S H A R A. Um, the first thing we would like is for you to bring us a rumbling of the deep. If that is what you wish. However, you will need to come and collect it from me. How will that work? I cannot return here ah. after I collect it. You would need to come to my protected area on Korea. How many was that? One. <laughs> that could have been three then, Jamie. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> I was risking that. <laughs> is this is this what you wish? It could be quite a journey for you to get there. And I cannot tell you where it is. Mm. Only the continent is on. That could be an issue. The time it would take to travel might sap all the time. It lies on Isaros. That's not our continent. No. It is not. Hmm. I suppose that still counts as one. If you wish, I can tell you how you may get a rumbling in the deep. That would it's be nice. Compensation for my inability to do the first. In the plane of Earth, once every thousand cycles, a king of the Zorn is born, and for a time, the Zorn enjoy royalty. Many Zorn band together to create a rumbling in a deep as part of a great feast for the king of the Zon. They make many of them in this time, for the king requires many feasts, as what can satiate the appetite of a noble creature like that. In the halls of glittering feasts, you will find it. On the table at which the Zon king eats, the king right now his name is Trudy Dory Chom Chara Krakra Brow I got Trudy Dory Trudy Dory Chom Krakra Brow that sure is a name Let's just hope I remember how to say that. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's hope. <laughs> I just want to hear you say it. <laughs> I feel like it'd be funnier if I wait a while and have forgotten and then just attempt. Let's find out. Well, at least we know our location now. The Hall of Glittering Feast. Does this change our other two options? I mean, I feel like one option is definitely set. And that's the finding out about Gon's fate. That'd be very nice to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we can still do the fate of our bullet yeah. home. Yeah, um, they can't come back here, but they might be able to get us from that. Okay, so... 
can you restore the missing piece of Gun's fate? I cannot restore something which doesn't truly exist. Hmm. What? Well, it's more really? of a concept. There is only one thing that mortals are fated to do, and that is to die. Hmm. So clearly, if I've had that bit of my fate, you know, I can never die, a mortal boom come at me. <laughs> if that is what you wish to believe. Optimism. Yep. That's, yeah, this conversation has left me with so much optimism. <laughs> well, that's kind of that then, for the moment. Yeah, for the time being. I guess. Uh, we should ask if they can collect us from the plane of Earth once we have the rumbling. Yeah. yeah. Will you be able to return us to our home once we conclude our business on the plane of Earth? I can. This, and you see as she opens up her mouth, there is a small bottle, uh, similar to the... Um, Shoot, I forgot its name. The uh, it looks similar to the, the light of Arendelle, is it? The, the light of, the from yeah. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the yeah. Of yeah. That's it. Light of Elendi. That's it. Uh, it looks a bottle similar to that, and she it's on the end of a tongue. Is she like trying to present it to us? Or? Yeah, she's leaning down to present it to you. Yeah, I'll grab it. It's sticky. I ignore it. It's like slimy. I press it to take the slime. Or do you? Nah, I'm probably too thinking, oh my god, so, this was in her mouth. Press the digitation isn't just like you wiggle your finger, it's a magic spell, so it's like big movements. <laughs> uh, you ungrateful little shit. <laughs> just that is a bottle of beyond. Open it and it will return you home. Return you home, as in collective? The plural, you. Okay. I am not simply speaking to the bard in black and red. Getting recognized. <laughs> <laughs> you see as Tristan's head grows. <laughs> oh no, I'll need to get a new hat soon. That's why the iron stone is four feet away from his head. It's the metaphysical representation of his head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have one thing left, right? No. No, that was them. Um... Still kind of counted. Well, at least we have a way home. Mm -hmm. And we know where we need to be. I am surprised. You could have asked many things of me. Yet you chose to ask the humble questions. People before have asked me for great artifacts, offer knowledge long lost. You simply want a way home, and that I can respect. Maybe we'll see you there at some point. You are bound to find me. Well, I guess in that case, we will see you again then. Wait, no, we're bound to as in like, oh, you were bound to have done this. Or like, you are bound as in like, spiritually. That is a riddle for you to find out. I think you're obsessing a lot on this fate thing though, Gone. I'll tell you what, let's eat a bit of your fate then and we'll see how that does you. Yeah, okay. All right. I would not recommend that. I'll have mine sunny side up, thanks. Well, I believe we have a, a business deal to cash in. I think we might, yeah. Hmm. I shall bid you farewell. 
Perhaps I will see you in the waking world. That yeah, was nice meeting you. Mm. We're bound to see you after all. Indeed you are. If you find yourself on the shores of Isaros, try find me. And then, in a slight twinking of light as they collapse in on themselves, they vanish. Oh, thank God. I really wasn't sure what the protocol was then for someone to leave. Like, did we just leave or we, like, bow, you know, like when you see kings and stuff? Is that what the thing? <laughs> I was back away and made yeah. eye contact. Do you avoid eye contact? Okay. I was planning on just turning and pulling because it looked like Gun was going to explode if he kept saying we're bound to do things. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you all glad we checked what was roaring? Yeah. 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 Pretty neat. Mm-hmm. That'd be a good story. Well, we should see if they put that shit back together. Yeah. Yeah. We should probably mm. see how the ship's doing. Mm-hmm. I guess we mosey on out the cave. Because I distinctly remember it being described as very empty. Mm-hmm. It's a very empty cave. Although yeah. there is that second, like, I mean, no. unless there was a perception. Yeah, now that there's not a huge sphinx in the way, yeah. and anything behind. Anything. I'm just yeah, there's like two hundred thousand gold back there. Oh shit! Uh, perfectly hidden behind the sphinx were three yeah, it's, holders. It's a sphinx-shaped pile of gold, perfectly in the same silhouette as they were standing. <laughs> We're all surprised as to why, you know, if we were sitting in line, how at least one of us didn't see. Oh, it's not, it's non occluding it's like... Perspective like, is weird. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like an Escher painting. Yeah. The gold coins go up and then they come back down again, and it's like, where do they stop? At one point, there's a Mobius strip. Yeah, yeah. It's just the last, like, step of the riddles to answer. No, no, it's literally a Mobius comic Explain. book strip made out of gold. <laughs> I don't no. read that. There's nothing there's nothing back there. Yeah. Back to the ship. It is an empty hollow, basically. So yeah. Alright, to the ship. Well, yeah. Alright. And as you return, um it's only been a few minutes you've been gone. Uh so uh Kadiva and the rest of the crew are just sort of looking at the uh at the great rend in this ship and Kadiva sort of scratching her head like um well, I'm not sure what to do here, guys. Uh, I guess we just go back town and uh, fix it back up there. Will it fly back? Oh, yeah, it'll fly. Oh, good, because we're done. Oh. What was in there? Ah, uh, three dragons. Oh. Which which one of those is right? I trust them as right. Mine. It's a sphinx. It right. was. was. It's gone. Oh, did you kill it? No. No. Oh, we're nice people. Well, I'm not going to judge you. I work for a crime lord. <laughs> and business is good. And business is good. good. Alright, well, let's get ourselves on back to uh, to Typhoon. I'm sure the boss will want to know all about what you've been doing out here with me. And yeah. there's an elephant stamping around my house. Ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, just get back on board and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. So as you make your way back on board, the uh, the ship begins to drift out slowly in the uh, ethereal winds and begins making its way back uh, towards Typhoon, which is not that far away, if you remember correctly. Um, and on the way back, is there anything you'd like to do or anything you'd like to ask? Kind of did uh, everything that we thought of on the way. Can I clarify what uh, the captain had said about where I could find a rifle like that? Because I'd only seen guns before. Uh, yeah. Um, and she goes, oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, Engelbert von Wenzel. He's the one who makes them. Uh, he's not in Wild Eye Dean's market. Something about not wanting to be in the public view. Uh, but he's uh, around near the docks. If you go around the back of one of the large warehouses, I'll, I'll show you where. He has a small shop back there. 
I have a distinct feeling it's going to be very out of the price range right now. Yeah, yeah but didn't. Yeah, but didn't. Um, what's his first? Uh, was it Unum? Mm -hmm. his name? Yeah. Did he not say that? You know, he he'd be able to talk to you about it after we'd finished the job. Did he not uh, mention something? Yeah, but that was the. I think that was about the pistol that uh, he had. Right. If I could get, if I can get that into uh, this rifle, then we'll talk about it. But, but and and that's got, like, out of that's out of character. I'm not using the words rifle and pistol. <laughs> I want like fifteen axes. I can chip in. Well, um, depending on how long we had on the uh, on the airship, I'd like to try and count a rough estimate of how much sapphire we have. Oh, awesome! Okay, okay. Uh, make just an intelligence check for me then. We have magic stuff we could trade as well, if it's like a really good thing to have. Uh, uh, just, just general intelligence. Yeah. yeah, just general intelligence. Here's a skill uh, check now. So. Right, uh, 13. 13. Um, so you, you got about like like 12 pounds of sapphire here, all in yeah. all? There was chunks that were inside me, so. Hmm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> all has been cleaned. <laughs> How much is this worth? <laughs> <laughs> it's got some blood on it. Does that devalue it? Uh, all in all, you think you've probably got about three and a half to four thousand gold, depending uh, worth of platinum here, uh, platinum sapphire here, because it's like a big old chunk of sapphire. That's yeah, and worst mm. comes to worst. If I can sell the, I could sell my breastplate uh, to add to it to try and buff it up a bit because if I have uh, something that can fire like that because I've fired it once uh, mm. I'm not going to need to be near anybody ever again well um, we've got that spear right I will give you my plus one greatsword that I barely use anymore uh, well I appreciate it a lot but you do churn through weapons a lot maybe you want to we'll hold off and see I mean, magical ones don't break so easily. Yeah, right? I haven't broken a magical... What? No, I didn't break that one. That one just disintegrated into dust because it was old as balls. I never even got to use it. It wasn't because it was old. Yeah, it was. because you sucked. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll check once we get back. It's not really a uh, price and matter. <sighs> Only people with every tooth can use that. I will hurt you. <laughs> now, now, folks, let's be friends. D and D brings people together. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Not to be confused with keep your enemies closer. You know the two go hand in hand. I <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's that's pretty much all I have. And once I find that out, then make sure that all the sapphire is like out of the clothes and pockets and stuff mm. i just go back and just laying down where i was <laughs> you know just moping on the deck yeah doing it pulling around yeah, yeah that yeah. being useful and mopping the deck only one one p not double yeah p. yes yeah mm -hmm. okay so uh after a while after a substantially a substantial amount of moping uh, you see, uh, as typhoon be typhoon becomes uh, to become clear in the distance once more, the remnants of the um, the very uh, to, to use a real word term, the very um, Chinese uh, style architecture of the remnants of this castle uh, become visible in the distance, and the ramshackle uh, menagerie of various different types of architecture, which makes up the current typhoon. Uh, the, it's not long before you pull into into port this time, very close to where you were before, but not at the same berth. Um, and as as it pulls into port, you hear this horrible, like this really bad creaking and groaning sound as the as the, the buzzer's embrace the sort of lurches back into port, and you can see the chains are tight and tall that are holding it together at this point. And Kadiva just sort of spins the wheel back to a neutral position and the sails uh, are pulled up by the crew and she just goes, well, I think that was a job well done. Meanwhile, Gunn is like clutching to the mast. 
She's like, uh, good luck getting this thing fixed up. I hope it is uh, not as bad as it looks. No, we'll be fine. Nothing a bit of spit and tackle can't help with. Oh, Lord, we flew in that. <laughs> Let's go with duct tape and WD 40. I don't know whatever those things are. One of those things where you only really realize. Is it one of those things where you only really acknowledge how dangerous it was once you've gotten off of it and can see it? Mm -hmm. The first moment it's safe, I am off that ship. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And as you 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 clamber ashore, a land. I don't know. Is it ashore? A ground? A ground ground one. Mm. Well, no, because you're not technically on the ground. No. And usually, if something's aground, that's bad. You you get off the boat. Get off the boat. <laughs> you get off the skyship. Uh, that's the, let's put it that way. Disembark uh, the vessel. Yes, there we go. That sounds flowery. Mm. Uh, and as you get off, uh, Kadiva follows you and goes, "Well, best get Rapon into the bus. So you can get your uh, whatever it is you wanted. What was it you were here for?" Uh, uh stuff. A whisker of the wind. That was the one. The Whisper of the Wind? You did all that for that? <laughs> Boy, that's quite a bit in the mouth. I, ah. got paid, I got paid 10 grand for this job. We've done worse for less. Yeah. We've done worse for no. You know, that's not a thing that you should be seeing in a positive light. That's the sort of thing you should be seeing to a glass of ale. Well, I'm not the one in charge, so. I do. Right, we suffer from lack of leadership. <laughs> We need more synergistic management solutions. <laughs> we need a manager. We actually do. <laughs> just hire some random guy as a manager to follow us around. I want to play the CEO AU of Corian. <laughs> you might have gun shoulder pads. Like fucking Dallas oh. up in this bitch. Gun definitely wears a bolo tie. Hmm. And she'll speak with a Texas accent too. Oh yeah, fucking huge stats on. <laughs> yeah, massive stats on. And Be- Spurs, despite the fact that she still drives. Yeah, base suit. No, yep. I can't, she's not a complete criminal. Come on, it'd be cream. What's the difference between beige and cream? Beige is more brown. Depends upon the beige. Mm. There's different. There's various varieties of beige. All right. <laughs> Anyway, six or one half a dozen other at this point. <laughs> no, we're not, we're just docked. <laughs> so Kadiva gets off with you. Oh, uh, she? <laughs> Jamie, don't <that was> shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Roadblock after roadblock. <laughs> Perkins give me strength. <laughs> Fuck you, Jamie, I saw you in <laughs> Please bear with us a moment while half of my party. Uh, I'm okay. I just heard a giggle. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah. Let us progress with this story of these heroes. All right. Serious, serious heroes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, are you you're just going to head straight to Unum? Uh, I'm going to have her point out the shop. She said she's going to point out first. Yeah, she's like, by oh. the docks. Yeah, yeah. No, look, don't worry. I'll, I'll I'll point out to you when we, on the way back. It's it's, it's a bit way around from here. So yeah, so Kadiva uh, comes with you to the, um, to, to Unum's silence again. Unum's uh, residency, um, and you see the same, uh, same bodyguard is there as before, Vanden. Uh, and um, as, as you get close, Kadiva just sort of strolls up to, to Vanden and is like, Vanden Failure, you know I hate you just as much now as I did the last time I saw you. And Vanden's just silent. Were well, you going to let us in then? And just sort of grunts and nods uh, and opens the door uh, and lets you inside. I say, we don't hit you, though, as we pass. 
And Kadeem goes, well, you should. Well, don't be sorry. Why should we hate him? Prior to this job, he was a mass murderer. Oh. Man's killed over 170 people. Oof. That's a lot. <laughs> Boss put a gay ass on him. Said that he didn't want another one of those demons running around the place, which would happen if he killed him. So he's going to force his soul to get better again so we don't get one of those nasty fellas around here. Rehabilitation. Hmm. Yeah, force rehabilitation by use of mind altering and magic. Hmm. Yeah, I still only heard, you know, rehabilitation. That's fine. Yep. <laughs> We're in a foreign land. It. Let's finish our business. Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's wrap things up here, I think. Put some mm-hmm. your mouth once again. Uh, and she leads you and Vanden stays at the door, just very flat-faced, uh, not making much motion. It's almost as if commanded to not make a motion to that sort of conversation. Uh, and Kaliva opens up the doors. You see she's a little less um, reserved about doing it uh, than, than Vanden was. Uh, she just almost flings the doors open, uh, and they make no sound at all as she does so. And she flings them off and catches them right at the end so they don't slam into the sides. And you see, Unum is sat there in the same position as, as they were previously. Uh, again, as before, completely nude. Uh, and I don't think I fully mentioned last time, but Unum is about 16 foot tall. You, you, you did. Mm. Yeah, uh, Unum is very tall. Uh, and uh, is is wearing nothing. Has that that uh, pale. Uh, where is it? Oh, piece of oh, one second. Blue, right? Yeah, pale blue. Changes how I feel about him being completely nude a lot. Hey, at least he's not Doctor Han- Manhattan. He <clears throat> is like on Doctor Manhattan. No, but is he like like Doctor Manhattan? I mean. Will he just vaporize us? Well, for a start, pronouns are they. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, they are genderless. I remember you saying that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's. There's not much down there. Attract my early statement. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're all like. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, oh, God. And as you go in, uh, Kadiva sits down, just flops down on a, uh, on like a, a big, like, almost like a beanbag, a big, like, big pillow, uh, and sort of gestures for you all to sit down, and Unum is just staring at you all now with this very hard stare. Very quietly sit down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very go over and sit down as well. Is it done then? It is, yes. Good. Tell me, what did you find out? They were sent after a sphinx. That's why they were there. And though they, when they could not find it, they chose to disrupt our businesses instead. Not the, not the brightest bunch I've ever seen in my life. Most of the plane of Earth are not. The, the leader was unique, to say the least. Uh, caused a bit of trouble, but once they went down, everything seemed to turn out all right. Trouble. What? What trouble? Oh, nothing. They just were a bit harder to put down than the average ones. Did a fair amount of damage to uh, the ship as well. He's, he's, their head turns to uh, Kadiva and they just raise an eyebrow. And Kadiva's just like... Good. Your reward, then. 
as was discussed. And you see now as the air for a moment gets incredibly chill. And for a good few seconds, uh, there is a uh, mist to your breath as you breathe. Before a wind picks up around a soft breeze, which in a room with no uh, windows or entryways, save for the closed doors, seems to come from nowhere. And as it does, you see as it picks across an area in front of Brunum, it begins to take form and shape until there is a crystalline uh, piece of air about six inches long, almost like a like a wavy needle, very thin, just hangs in the air for a moment before it drops and you know, picks it out of the air like a toothpick in their hands. And as they place it down upon the floor gently, you can hear as he places it, uh, sorry, as they place it down, this faint whistling as you get close to it. Hmm. I'd like to uh, take it, have a good look at it for a minute and then put it in the bag so that it's not making any noise for him. Then. It's it's a it's a very low whistle. It's not very much noise. It just sounds like wind. Um, and uh, you you pick it up and you you look over it and you put it in the bag. Are our dealings done? I believe you were gonna mention a little more about these weapons you've been carrying. I believe you're going to tell us a little bit more about how they work or just where they're from. Or, I remember something mentioned about it. I'm sorry. My memory is fuzzy. I'm trying to look through my notes to see if something was actually mentioned or not. I do not remember this conversation. You asked if they would be used to you in your trek, and I replied that they would not. And nothing right, more was discussed of them. Well, in that case... No. If you were to ask me if you can have one, I would say no. Fair enough. Should kind of turn to the others. Anything else? Then our business here is concluded, yeah. Good. I appreciate your quietness. You may leave. I just kind of bow my head and start walking out. Very quietly follows you. All right. You open the doors and make your way out. Uh, Kadiva comes with you. Uh. And as you find yourself outside once again now, Kadiva opens the door into Vanden. Ah, well then. Ah, very uh, unusual individual. Mm. Yeah. Just can't get a like, read on them. You seem to meet a lot of unusual people. We do. Yeah, to be honest, all of this is starting to become normal now. How weird everybody else is. Mm. You know, ever heard of the Vardy before? The, the who, what, where, when, why now? No. Nope. Who knows a Vardy? The only one you'll find out of Acor. The people call them Unum the Vowlers. Because, well, they don't exactly describe to the same way as everyone else. Thing is, you can't exactly be a duke or win like Unum is and not ascribe to at least some of your values. So, despite everything that they do, they still have to adhere to be good. Oh. 
It's the way of the universe. Huh. A good crime boss. Fair enough. Well, they seem to do good around here. Yeah. Gunnam's never killed anyone. Liam's thugs have, though, right? Nope. Huh? Gunnam keeps their voice low. It's amazing how much damage a whisper can do. Interesting. So what's next for you, Kadiva? Well, whatever the boss tells me to do. Uh, we have a man at the back of a warehouse to see past. We do. That you do. So, what are you all doing after uh, after you've got your uh, your rifle? Ah, uh, you know, escaping planes a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned plane of earth. Yep. Yeah. See you know, the sights. You know. I got a smaller ship that I own myself. I could take you out to Okamax more if you want. That would be lovely. Be very helpful. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a distance from here, maybe six or seven, like six or seven days. But hmm. I can take you there. Got the time. We yeah, we do actually. All right. First off, though, I'll take you to see. Well, I'll show you where my uh, my friend is. <laughs> I say friend. They're not my friend, but. I'll take you to them. And then uh, I gotta leave you for a bit. I'm sure there's a bit more you want to see around the place. Hmm. We have to go back to the bazaar, right? For the key thing? Gate key thing? To get to the earth place? We definitely have to go back by something. Hmm. We have it to was go back. It was the it was blue dragon meat. Mm, that thing. It was that and the gate key. Yeah. We have to go for the gate key. Yeah. Who was the gatekeeper from again? You weren't told. Right. I don't think you were told. I have a name written down here and I don't know why. I don't think you told us a name, no, just that it no. could be found. I'll have a quick yeah. flick back, but I don't know. In the meantime, buy some guns. <laughs> <laughs> all right so as Kadiva leads you down uh, she points out in a dock quite a distance around uh, from where Unum's section of, of Typhon is she points behind uh, in, in a, an alleyway between two of these large dock houses here she points down and says you'll find the old man in there All right. Uh, has anyone heading into? I'll come in yeah. when you want. Yeah, sure. Yeah, see I want to come in and see what's happening. Yeah. All right. So we'll make our way in. Yeah. Okay. So as you go down the alleyway, that you see there is a door at the end. There is no sign. There is no uh, knocker on the door or any form of bell or anything. It seems like a there's a door in the back side of this warehouse. Uh, I'll knock on it. Okay. A second passes before the door opens and you see uh, wearing what I can only describe as a Prussian military uniform uh, with a large, uh, very like late 18th, 1800s mustache, hair swept over to the side uh, with thin, small spectacles on. Uh, is maybe a uh, seventy, uh, maybe seventy-five, seventy-six, mid seventies-ish uh, man. And as you open it, he uh, sort of glowers down at you all in the way that only someone who's Teutonic can they use a lot of real-world terminology because it's the easiest way to get it across. What is it you want? 
Uh, we are interested to see uh, your wares. All of you? A couple of us. No, goodbye. He closes the door on you. I'll knock again. The door opens once more. I already told you to go. What is it you want? I would like to buy a rifle. Just me. Come inside. I had inside. Well, are you just going to stand there? Well, you shut the door on us last time. I didn't know if the rest of us were allowed in. I'm walking past him. He goes, I follow if he doesn't stop anybody. <laughs> Both of us come inside. Thank you for the offer. He closes the door behind you. Why is it you want to buy a rifle? Uh, it's something I just recently seen, and it's a marvel. I've never seen anything like it. No, it is not a marvel. It isn't. No, it is a nightmare. It is the pure manifestation of death. An alpha nobler. You say you have never seen it before. That means that your world does not have them. You have not had the curse of them being made yet. Not yet. And you are asking me to destroy your world as you know it. Well, we're not just uh, looking to bring them around for people to see, for people to make. It's not something I want to carry openly. How long did it take you to learn how to use that bow on your back? I would say I'm still learning. But how long until you could fire it in a straight line and hit your target? Not that long. How long is not that long? Be specific, boy. Number. Uh, I would say before I was comfortable and happy, less than four months before I could hit consistently. And I could teach you Anyone could teach anyone how to use one of these rifles in five minutes. You could make a hundred of them a day. They are twice as strong as your bow and could be used in the hands of a child. You understand. This is not a toy. It is not some hunting weapon. This has one specific purpose, and that is to kill people. Well, I'm currently looking for ways to kill certain people. You might be, and your causes may be noble as they may not be. It's... But I ask of you, what happens when you die? What happens when you pass on and this weapon you leave behind? Uh, I, if I my, if I pass on and it's still intact, then I'll leave it to one of my friends here and they'll take care of it. Make sure what, that it doesn't pass on with me. What happens if it is stolen? Uh, then whoever stole it will uh, die. What happens if you all die and it is left somewhere in the wastes and someone else finds it? We're not all dying. I'm immortal. I'm pretty sure that's a misconception. <laughs> you truly think that you can use this and have it and not inflict the curse? Uh, if I get, If I take it with me, I'll make it my mission to ensure that it doesn't happen. And if I feel look like me, I'm going to fail... Look me in the eyes. 
look at me straight in the eyes and you tell me that you believe that you are strong enough to prevent what has caused the death of so many across so many worlds. I'm strong enough. I do not believe you. But I will need you to make a, pers a persuasion check for me. <laughs> okay, persuasion. I'm actually proficient in. Let's go. Um, would it be helpful if I said, if, if Ronan bites the dust, we'll snap the thing in two? 25 total. I have a plus six. Sounds like he doesn't need help. I can see your conviction. You will have to forgive me. I have seen the carnage this has wrought upon my own world. I have seen people, even as is, it is only a curiosity upon my world. I, I have seen the damage it can do. There was an area, a single goblin got a hold, just one got a hold of a pistol. And he held ransom for towns. Hold over 20 people, a single goblin. And you know how easy the village can deal with a single goblin. This is a very dangerous thing I am giving you here. I understand that. I am not telling you how it is made. I don't ask you to tell me how it's made. I am not giving you the capability to make more ammunition or to find more ways to make it fire ammunition. You will have what I give you for it. And beyond that, I will not be giving you anything else. And I ask of you that you do not try and find out how it works, how to make ammunition, what makes ammunition. And when it is done, you will not keep it with you. You will not hang it above your mantle place. You will destroy it. And not simply by casting it into the fire or down a hole. You will make sure it is gone. Completely and utterly. Because this is not for me that I ask you to do this. It is for your world. You understand. I accept every time you put forward. If anyone, and people will, comes after you for these secrets, you kill them. That was a firework, yes. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Wasn't it? Pretty sure it wasn't. That sounded like a firework. Uh oh. Yeah, no, it, I don't think it was. Okay. That's whatever. Who's from Northern Ireland here? Uh, uh, this cannot fall into another world's hands. I see the conviction and a strength in your eyes, and I know that you will try. I still not complete, do not completely believe you. But I am a gunsmith. Making guns is what I do. So I will give this to you. Of course, for a small amount of money. Yeah, well, that's to be expected. You are a gunsmith. 2,000 of your finest golden coins. With just short of it in actual coins. How much do we have? Uh, in coins, we've got the... Uh, it's 1978. What did you spend 22 gold on? I gave you... Oh, no, you uh, gave me that 20, didn't you? Oh, that's yeah, in I gave you the amount to round us up to an even 2,000. Well, then, yes, we have that. And I still have 100 gold pieces in personal as well, so... 
Yeah, it's in the notes that I didn't update on there because I didn't have a pencil. Okay, so we can pay for it and then we'll move on to try and restock afterwards. Mm hmm. Then, yeah, if you would, Tristan. Uh, yeah, I'll start handing over the money. No. You are not buying it, your friend is. Okay, give me the bag of holding. He pays me. I have no business dealings with you, and your hat looks stupid. I beg to differ. Your mustache I... looks great. Thank you. I take the bag of holding and begin to play coins. All right. And as you hand it over, he grabs the bag with one hand. And as he grabs it, he lets it drop out of his hand, grabs your wrist, slams it into a wall, places a pistol against the palm of your hand and fires. Okay. Blasts a hole through your hand. Uh, Much points of damage. Well, that's got. Uh, that is 18 points of piercing damage. 18. That should be yep. relatively easy math to do, but I'm struggling. It's okay. Uh, you hear this echoing boom that comes out as he just holds it. I, like, jump forward being like, hey, what the fuck? And I'm pulling He's up my pistol round. I put a hand out at the same time, so there's a hand and a pistol in the same direction. You see what this can do. You are marked now. Let's your hand fall. Yeah, I'll just continue what I'm doing. Try hide the hand a little bit. He throws the pistol to the side, clatters against the floor. Yeah. Wait here. I will get you some bandages and your rifle. And he walks off into the into the back. What sort of fucking business model is shooting your customers? Hmm. Also, I don't think bandages are going to do the best job on that one. So yeah. I'll give you a second level healing word. Which is... And you, you see this thing has, much like a bullet, put a hole through your hand. Mm-hmm. So that's... That's just unsanitary. It is like cut I, off all use of the fingers in your hand right now. I am unsanitary, so it's fine. <laughs> Let's magically heal this wound so it isn't like a hive of infection. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be fine. That already is. Uh, so that's 10 points back. Okay. All right. So as he comes back, he hands you a stack of bandages. Make sure to keep it clean. Yeah, I'll just keep it around the hand and begin to wrap. And he slings off his back uh, this long, beautiful, far more, uh, far more beautiful than uh, the one that um, Kadiva had. This long barreled rifle here with the same wheel lock mechanism. Uh, and he hands it to you as well as a small bag alongside it. Ten. Ten shots is all you have. Ten's very generous, thank you. Ten rounds to try and change your world for the better. <laughs> Sitting on the precipice of changing it for the worse. I hope to not hear stories in the future of how your world has fallen. Your name. What is your name? Rafirian. Rafirian. I am von Engelbrecht von Winzer. I am the creator of the firearm on the plain of Valia. It was I who first made it. It is I who will bear its shame for all time. It was good to meet you. Now, 
Please be gone. I have much to do. I'll follow yeah. order. Doesn't seem like the kind of place I want to tarry about in. Yeah, fuck this guy. I leave too, but I try to just take in the surroundings just because it's new and interesting. I mean, the interior here is um, much like a much like the um, the clocksmith, the the watchmaker that you went to, the clockwork engineer. Um, all manner of small, intricate tools and strange devices. Uh, and there is a barrel in the corner which is placed away from everything else. And uh, you can see the pistol is still there on the floor uh, where he scattered it to the back of the room. You can see the flecks of, uh, of Ronan's blood across it and the spattering on the wall and the splintered wood where the shot went through. I leave. After noticing all these things. Pretty extreme. Well, 200 gold a shot. That, uh, better be damn useful. Yeah, well, with only 10 shots, every shot's going to be one that matters against someone who matters. Mm -hmm. Fuck! I cast Cure Wounds in my hand. <laughs> yeah, okay. someone, preferably, who has more than 200 gold in their pocket. Uh, as for the stats for the rifle, it is of course named a rifle, uh, and it is uh, 2d10 damage uh, with a base range uh, of 600 and a maximum range of 1,000. Oh. Oh, and job, mate. you do not get proficiency bonus to attacks with it. And it's 2d10 piercing damage. 2d10 piercing, yes. Non-magical, of course. Though it may seem like magic to you, it is simple thermodynamics. All right, marketplace then. Does archery? Sorry, does archery bonus apply to it? As it's a ranged weapon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So the you'll be on what? Four plus two, six. Uh, plus six. Yeah, plus six to hit. Mm -hmm. Respectable. Mm -hmm. Not quite Ronin levels, but respectable. Oh, I remember when I had plus six to hit. <laughs> Did you ever have plus six to hit? Yeah, like level two. Oh, whatever. <laughs> All right. Okay, and I've marked the rifle ammunition down in the sheet as well. Yeah, okay. Ten. Ten, exactly. Okay. So you're heading to, uh... What is this? Back to the bazaar. Mm. You're heading back to the bazaar. Waladin's bazaar. Yeah. Do I see anyone selling the slinger from Monster Hunter? Which is what I've decided I do actually want. <laughs> it's very... <laughs> <laughs> okay. A small right. wrist mounted catapult. Yes. Uh, and. They can grapple. Well, and it's like a little ballista. Basically. Yeah. Uh, what you need is a wrist mounted trebuchet. True. <laughs> Full sized. The kick on that would just snap your arm. <laughs> Full sized trebuchet attached to Tilly's arm. Look, I'm pretty strong, okay? I'm pretty sure that just at that point it's Tilly attached to, not... <laughs> He's lying on the floor underneath the trebuchet. <laughs> Does your trebuchet have a halfling mount? <laughs> Consider upgrading today. Only $9.99. Only monthly installments of $19.99 from JML. Halfling <laughs> not included. JML. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's some British humour for you, man. Mm. So, you make your way back to Waladin's Bazaar, and the the same sights and sounds that you saw before enter into your vision uh, as you uh, as you make your way into the bazaar once more. Right. Um, would be nice to try and find someone who can make this sapphire gold, and by that I mean trade. Mm -hmm. So, or maybe we no can go to, to the dwarf man that knows all about um, 
mm-hmm. minerals and things. Unless the business cards are working and is, you know, on shift. Oh, you know, like to a jeweler, maybe? That also, yeah, you know. but I feel like the dwarf with the very helpful and, and, and lovely assistant might mm. be a bit more useful. Because there's minerals. You know, I, I you know, feel like they're mostly and, into metals. And we dwarves know about minerals because they come from mountains and stuff and rocks. Matterman Simpson. <laughs> but yeah, for real, though, um... When uh, the whole time we're in the marketplace, uh, Gunn is like low key looking for Helga, but like pretending she's not. Oops. You know, every time she walks past the stall, like. Ah, uh, no, my perception check was very low. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, with a passive of 20, do I know it? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Make a stealth check, I guess, Gun. I mean, considering how subtle Gun is. Subtle as a. Well, I rolled a twelve on the dice, so no. Yeah, you know this. Trust in <laughs> Say anything, I'll kill you. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, at some point, it's hard to understand where Jamie ends and Tristan begins. It really is. Yeah, I think both of them are pushing the lock. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the defining trait, really. We know where you live. Do you? Yeah. General vicinity. Yeah, I don't. General vicinity? Yeah. <laughs> so, so what, what, what are you looking for? What, what did you decide on? If um, our friend is about, have a word. If not. Oh, you're looking for Gideon Goodman. If Gideon's about. All right. Uh, you know what? Make an investigation check for me then. Do we need it? I'm sure we can remember the way back to the shop. Mm. 15. You might have put his rates up. All right. It actually being paid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 100% increase of zero is still zero. Uh, and yeah, you do eventually find Gideon. Uh, and you see he's currently guiding around uh, two, uh, what looked to be two uh, water ganasi. Not the same two that you saw in the plane of fire, to be clear. Uh, but two water ganasi. And as he sees you, he goes, oh, hey, it's my good friends. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you very much. I am on a tour right now, but if you need anything, just give me an hour or so and I'll, I'll come around right over and help you out. Awesome, excellent, thank you very much. Not a problem, because I'm Gideon Goodman, guys. I get you where you're going. You do indeed. I'm so proud of my son. <laughs> <laughs> and he has the demeanor, like, still as he did when he first met you, of like a used car salesman. Do you know what vibe I'm getting? Like a Saul Goodman vibe? Initially, before we helped him, I was definitely thinking like Gil from, from Simpsons. Simpsons. God, yeah. Now that you mention that, I no, don't just got more hope. I don't understand any of these references. You don't know Gil? No. I think I've watched maybe a dozen Sim- Simpsons episodes in my it's life. It's this character. <laughs> it is this guy. Okay. So just right. this guy has more hope. This peak of happiness will last about two seconds for him before it goes terrible again. That's Gil. <laughs> Okay. So, um, are you going to wait for Gideon, or are you going to... No, we can find out where we're going. Yeah, we're, we're adults. All yeah. Right. But if we don't find it within an hour. All right. <laughs> we didn't deserve to. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, so you're looking for jewelers, or are you looking for gallows? I don't really. I think jewelers would be best for the Yeah, day. yeah, because they'll know better the quality of. <laughs> Tell me from experience selling stolen gems. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> jewelers. Wait, <laughs> Tilly would probably sell them to a fence, though, not a jewelers. <laughs> jewelers tend to ask, "Where did you get these?" <laughs> family. Tilly just has a lot of family heirlooms. I think they have pretty yeah. good answers. Yeah, and oh, no, don't, don't, don't say family heirlooms. Oh, also, uh, <laughs> accommodation. I didn't stick around in these places for long. 
Tilly travels light, but she always picks things up along the way. Uh, so yeah, jewelers. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check for me, please. Why is all the music being really ominous? Ooh, this is way better. We live uh, ominous lives. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. Yeah, Far too good. Uh, it's so, the iron stone, I swear. Yeah. It takes you a little bit of time, but not an hour. But you do find uh, a jeweler's, um, and uh, it, it has a sign in what you're fairly convinced is actual gold on the front, and it looks like a the the. The best way that I can explain it looks like is it looks like um, an old Western general store. General store. No, please continue with the description. Yeah, it looks like an old Western general store. It has uh, a small glass window in the front of which you can see inside is there is a number of different uh, jewelry pieces, bracelets, amulets, rings, all individually placed on these small velvet cushions. Uh, and the sign out the front said says Beatrice Barlin's finest jewelers and locksmiths. Well, this seems like the place. Mm. It's an interesting um, combination of jobs too. It's like uh, buy some jewels and make sure no one can pick the lock after you get after you get them. Ivy like lost the key to your jewelry box. That also, yeah. I mean, you know, jewelry before. requires fine motor skills and little tools. So does lock picking. It's you know, it's a natural evolution. Or, or maybe this guy goes around to your house, installs your locks, keeps a spare. Oh, and then Rob's check, check his wares, oh. but yeah. yeah. Or am I, I just like that bad a person? That's where my mind went first. It might be that one. Yeah, mm. I think it's probably that one because just if you didn't think like nobody. Yeah, I think got, you. Yeah. Hey, I've just got new locks, but where's my stuff gone? Yeah, mm. I think you lot are rubbing off on me. You're on bad influences. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, says the thief. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just turned over a new leaf. Okay. It rhymes. It's true. Yeah, that's how. That is how the universe works. Anyway, <laughs> are we gonna go in the shop or what? Yeah, I believe so. All right. So uh, you make your way inside, and as you go in, there is this, the cutest little dinkle from this bell above the door as you go in. Uh, and you see that there is behind a small uh, a small desk at the back um, that has a light, like a, a heavy light from this candlelight shining on it. It's been magnified through this lens. Uh, is uh, about a three and a half foot tall old lady with a perm uh, and a a dress that looks like 1970s curtains uh, and these big jam jar spectacles on. And she comes in and she's like, oh, hello, I'm Beatrice Ballin. It's lovely to meet you. I'm uh, I'm Johnny Cash. Nice to meet you, Jonathan. You all look so lovely today. Welcome to Beatrice Ballin's. We, buy, we sell you jewellery and the place to store it away from unscrupulous thieves and youths. Mm. Mm. Loiterers on street corners. Oh, the worst. Hello. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could uh, help. We recently um, came into the possession of quite a lot of uh, sapphire. Oh, wonderful. I love sapphire. And we're just wondering whether or not we can... Um, sell it oh of course i do sales yes yes uh, wonderful um well, would you mind if um we had a look through just to you know cause it's about four four thousand golds worth is that oh, is it is this really? within the wheelhouse well young man i will be the judge of that i don't trust any of these young people these days with their magic and their swords um, I lean on the desk. And their magic swords. With their dungeons and their dragons. I lean on the desk and I'm like, a lot of it's broken, which might reduce the value, I think. 
That's why I said about. Oh, look at you, young lady. Aren't you just the cutest ball of love? Are you a jeweler? Ah, no. Then stop telling me how to do my job. Okay. Oh, it's so wonderful to meet young people these days. Such a wonderful group of people you all are. Wait, I thought you people were all unscrupulous, loitering on corners and... Oh, yes, they are. But not these ones. You're all the good ones. Because uh, we're good. not loitering. You are. You carry on in my shop without showing me what this sapphire is, young man. That's a good point. Wisdom. Uh, yeah, I like it. I'll come over to the counter and start um, presenting the sapphire. Oh, look at all this dust in your bag. You're making a mess. You used today no understanding of cleanliness. Back in my day, when I was young, my generation had to get up at five in the morning every day just to clean the house down. You know, you're so right. This boy is filthy. Oh, he really is. Awful. I'm not paying attention, but I, like, look around in a fence. Oh, young lady, you are so unmodest. Yep, that's me. Oh, that's that's horrendous. Modesty like a... is so last century. Oh, that's vile. You look like a charlatan. No, a harlot. Mm, that's me. Disgusting youth. Mm. There, it's so uh, it's it's just... Gross. Oof. Yeah. Oof. I don't, no, I don't want to talk to you anymore. There's so much jiggling flesh on show. Oof. Mm. Oh, isn't that so... Oh, no, no, no. Women shouldn't look like that. Should be cleaning the house. Oh, well, you know, different lives for different people. We all have our own paths to take. Oh, I feel like stabbing you, you know. Mm, <laughs> so what it. I'd like to do at this point is kind of like interpose myself in the view. <laughs> um, so this sapphire, would you like to know where we got it from? No. Oh, okay. Probably stolen. It's not actually. It was earned. Oh, that makes a change. Young people these days are always stealing things. They don't know how to do a hard day's work in their lives. I know. I feel the layabouts most of them, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you'd know. So, yes. I'm trying to better myself. Yes, and if you'd stop talking, I could tell you how much this was worth. Thank you. Picks through it and you see she pulls the magnifying glass down and is looking through a lot of it. And she's like, oh, it's so cracked. Oh, use these days. They can't take care of anything. You know, we were lucky to even get a single stone when I was young, let alone sapphire. Mm, yes. Mm. Mm, 3,000 gold. Can I insight check the old lady? Yes. Sure. She's a hag. <laughs> I mean, I think she's a hag in one sense, but not the one you're talking about. <laughs> the classical, not the fantasy sense. Uh, that's a 16 on insight. Uh, she doesn't like you. Hmm. Did we like, see any other sort of jeweler like places on the way? Uh, this was the first one that you saw. This was the first one. I'm actually going to, while Tristan is trying to get on the good side of this horrible old bint, I'm um, <laughs> going to go and go back to the, uh, the the guy with the forge, the dwarf bloke. Okay, um, you're going to go see Gala. Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I tag along? No. All right. So the two of you are off to see, to see Gala while this is happening. Uh, and... You, you you wander back through the bazaar and uh, to to Gallo's shop and it, it looks much as it did before. Uh, and as you get inside there, um, you see that uh, currently right now uh, Gallo is uh, counting through bars, uh, and as he is placing them onto a pallet, Helga is picking them up very very powerfully and lifting them over her head and taking them into the back. And she has got the sheen of sweat over her as she's lifting them across. So. Um, Gun will just kind of stroll in the door and be like mid sentence, like, hey, Dalek! And then she'll see Helga and go. <laughs> Helga pays no notice. And um, when she gets right in the end, she's like, hello. Hi. And then walks on. <laughs> and Gun was like, hey, what's a Dalek? 
Oh, oh, it's just what we call um, dwarves on my plane. It's it's like a friendly thing. It's a it's a good thing. All right. Well, uh, what can I do for you again? I was um, a Gunhild, eh? Mm, Gunhild, eh? You got it. Aye. Um, my party and I came into possession of a bunch of sapphire. All right. Do you or do you know anybody around here that would be able to, you know, take it off our hands? Because we're not going to do anything with it. Uh, hmm. Hey, the well, I suppose you you could take it to Beatrice, but uh, is she that old? Mm. Ah, she's not too bad if you've got at least a century on you. Mm. Mm. We've we've met. Oh, have you? <laughs> I take it it didn't go well. She thinks I'm immodest and disgusting. Oh yeah, she probably thinks that about you. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, she's got some attitudes we quash in our world um, quite some time ago. Hey, uh, well, yeah, you see, about 20 years ago, she's tried to hold a public vote to get rid of all of the trolls in the bazaar, said that they were unhealthy. Mm. Lovely lady. Is there anyone else you can think of? Uh, well, <sighs> hey, mm? I don't like seeing this because they're an orc, but... I've had, as you know, I've had some dealings with them. Uh, but there is a jeweler here by the name of Frazag. And he's a fair eye. He'll give you a good price. All right. He's just down the street there. Cool. Um, thank you for that. Thanks. Uh, hey. She just, not a problem. Mm, she just really, really got on my nerves. And I don't like dealing with Hey, she does that. We've been trying to get rid of her for a long time. But oh, I just went Irish there for a second. Eh, uh, but, uh, she... But to be fairly honest, she just refuses to die. <laughs> She's just that horrible, huh? I am fairly certain that the secret to immortality is literally just being a bad person. Just spite. Hey. Mm. She's staying alive through general hatred of other people. Mm. And change. It's not healthy, man. No, it's not. I'm staying alive through beer. That's my plan. Hey, no, not a problem. Uh, yeah. well, hey, hey, Ronan, did uh, did you want something? Uh, yeah, I'm looking to offload this uh, breastplate, see if I can get a bit of gold for it. Hey, what? You want to get rid of fine dwarven craftsmanship? Uh, I want to sell it for all of the, every gold that the fine dwarven craftsmanship's worth. Have you know that fine dwarven craftsmanship is priceless? I've tried it so then it. you'll give me infinite amounts of money for the breastplate? And have you know I'll give you nothing for that breastplate, lad? That's that's fair. I'll say that in dwarven. I'll say that's that's fair. Hey, why do you want to get rid of something like that? Uh I need a lot of gold. What exactly uh, do you need so much gold for? Well, if you must know, I'm planning on opening an establishment back on our home plane with a lot of fine dwarven ale in it. And that doesn't come cheap either, so... <laughs> hey, it doesn't. <laughs> fine dwarven crafts, again, beginning to understand. Priceless. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm not going to buy it off you, unfortunately. I'd recommend not selling it. Get your gold another way. Use that fine dwarven craftsmanship to go kill yourself some monsters and steal their gold. They're not going to use it after all when they're dead. Yeah, true. Uh, well, I mean, that's pretty much... I was just sort of eyeballing it anyway, not really dedicated to it. I want to see how much people were offering. Hey, of course you weren't. I can see the gold coins in your eyes from here. Uh, no, that's just uh, all the gold coins that I don't have anymore. I'm just thinking about them. Hey, where's all your gold gone? <sighs> just... I know where the rest of my gold's going, towards the food in one of the shops here. Hey, but that'd be Alderith's place. Mm -hmm. Gideon took you there, didn't he? Mm -hmm. mm, the blue dragon. Exactly. Hey, that's the good stuff. Exactly. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, I just sort of wanted to leave that shop anyway before... Uh, well, she was roasting everybody else and didn't get to me, so <laughs> I squeezed the wound in my hand a little bit and bled on the floor and then left. 
Ooh. Wow. I, I figured I didn't need to hear. I already knew what she was going to say, so it's fine. Meanwhile, uh, back at Beatrice's place. So are you going to take the 3,000 gold or not, you disgusting youth? Uh, well, you see, you're not the first we've uh, actually come to, and we just thought we'd find the best offer. And we've still got a few people to uh, to see. Um, and Out of my shop right now, you disgusting man. All right, gladly. I won't have anyone coming in here and trying to haggle with me. Back in my day, we accepted our elders and respected them. And if they gave us a price, we gladly took it. I'm just putting it in back in the bag, listening and nodding politely. And time for people like you. I always said that we should have banned adventurers from this place long ago. They come in right. here. I do apologize. Place. As you say, you don't have the time. I mean, it's really precious, you know, in the twilight don't years. Talk to over me, every young man. Don't as, you, you know, as, as you can. And I'm just backing away you as I'm doing this. Just making stop right this instant. Ooh. 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 Is, is, are, there, are there any pictures on the wall in frames, by the way? Yes. Um, the picture of what looks to be a Scotty dog. It's now going to be crooked. I'm just going to walk up to it and just... Good day. And leave. She's just just hurling abuse at you as you exit the door. Um, I walk backwards out of the door, giving her the finger with both hands. The Tilly special. (sighs) I invented that on my plane. (laughs) (laughs) Ceremonial. It's an old halfling curse. What one of these days you're going to find an ancient statue of someone doing exactly the same thing? Like I said, it's an old halfling curse. <laughs> <laughs> so you exit out of Beatrice's store. Uh, well, she was a breath of stale air. Well, I hope you aren't bluffing. Wait, we do need to sell this stuff. Yeah, but I like I had a look over it and it was worth like more than what she said. I mean, I'm not a professional, but it was worth more than what she said, so I wasn't going to give it to her. Well, I'll take your word for it, I guess. We should look for another I just hope I'm right. (laughs) Yeah. Where do you reckon they've gone? Um, well, gun left, and I think we all know where gun would go. Mm -hmm. But Ronan also left, and we kind of have an idea where he would go to. Oh, I think the gun thing is more reliable. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, well, should we head back to um, what was his name again? Ga- Gala's workshop. Hello, yeah. Okay, so as you head over there, um, it's about this time you get in there about as the conversation finishes, uh, and you see uh, Helga comes out of the back room now. Uh, once again, is like they've finished stacking Gala. And Gala's like, oh, hey, lass, good, you can take your break now. She goes, it's good, thank you. And she just walks over to a chair, sits down on the chair and crosses her arms. Is that your Observing break? energy. I, I, I like it. Is that your break? Just staying in the chair? Duh. You're not hungry or anything? Yes, so hungry. Huh. Uh, well, um, my my friends and I will be going to get some food soon. If you see, I'm not I'm not really that hungry to be honest with you. To join us, I'm going at least. <clears throat> Die, come get food. Yes. Cool. We go. We go now. Yes. Sure. Yeah, I'll tell these those where to to. Yeah. Let's take you to favorite restaurant. Oh? That is good. That sounds like a date gun. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, idiots, uh, the sapphire, there's an old guy down the place called Za something. Um, wow. <laughs> that, so, yeah, um, good prices apparently can be trusted. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. 
Oh, I can hear your stomach rumbling from here, so you I'm might want to. Uh... I'm starving. I'm. I'm uh, going yeah, yeah. get some food. You know. Mm. Um, we can we can go sell this while you enjoy good company. What's that look for Tilly? <laughs> Helga comes over now and stands next to you and goes, "Come, strong lady, we go." Okay. Bye. <laughs> and I walk off with her. <laughs> so, what are the rest of you doing? Ah, oh, they grow up so fast. Um, <laughs> uh, turn to uh, Gower and he's like, so the thing that uh, the red first red haired one um, mentioned, uh, the orc. Hey, Frazag, down the street. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah I'm not a fan of the old lady. Hey, yeah, hey, she's not so good, is she? No. Hey. I might make it a habit um, if I ever walk past again just to make all the pictures crooked again. I feel like that's going to be a worthy response. Are you sure you just want to don't want to burn her shop down with her inside it? It's a little excessive. But, you see you that. Know. But at this point, she's more firewood than she is person. She's a dried out husk from long ago. She stands in direct sunlight. The uh, huge glasses will probably, like, you know, burn her eyes out. Yeah, no, the sun refuses to look at her. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, <laughs> I'll go find this uh, half orc and avoid her again. Yeah, let's go get some money. Yeah. Um, I wolf whistle down the street after Gun and Hilda before we walk off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So you you hear a wolf whistle gun from behind you. Oh, the worst thing is I'm with you, and if gun turns round, you're the musical one. Yeah. I That's... take a copper piece from my pack, spin around, and throw it as hard as I can at Tristan's face. Okay, make an attack roll against Tristan. <laughs> crit, crit, crit. As you, yeah, as you turn around, we're definitely like. I'll be looking and I'll be trying to frame him as much as I can, knowing that that's exactly what we're doing. It's a 23. Do I, do <laughs> I'm I still there, like. Are you proficient you are, in coin? You, you are not proficient in coin, okay, though. Okay, that's 23. Yeah, that will hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's an improvised weapon, so roll a d4 of damage. D4 of damage. Let's go. That's four. Okay. <laughs> what? Plus your strength. Plus strength. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> so Gun turns around and with Herculean strength flings a coin at you and it hits uh, right in the middle of your forehead, uh, face side up, and just boosh, straight into your forehead before it flicks down, leaving behind an imprint of like a dragon's head that was the minting mark of the coin, just in the middle of your forehead that is like bright red. Like you've just been slapped, mm. and you, uh, instant headache. Mm -hmm. I I stand there really quietly for a second, and then double over laughing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you really shouldn't have whistled, Tristan. Honestly, <laughs> did you see anything else happening from doing that? Also, I'm gonna bend over, pick up the copper bed. Now they all count now. No, 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 no. That's mine. She gave it to me. Yeah, the it, it, that is true. It's marked on your head. There you go. Mm -hmm. I just grip it real tight. It just the, the but, copper just bends. It's copper. It, it goes in a special pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that one's getting saved. Uh, anyway, they saw. Yep. There's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Tilly, you owe me big time on that one. I took. I know that. you got a copper out of that. Uh, I, uh, I don't feel like that covers it. Well, we're <laughs> gonna get some gold, so go find this jeweler. How did Tristan die? He was killed by a copper piece. <laughs> <laughs> the cost of a life seems to get cheaper. Uh, so you go and you see uh, Frazarg, and, and for the sake of brevity, he's uh, quite a pleasant uh, orc. He's uh, wearing a long coat, uh, he, and uh, he uh, has a much more modest style than, than uh, Beatry. Uh, and he, he says that it's worth about three and a half thousand gold. Said it would be worth a bit more, but the broken, broken up nature of it makes it harder to sell and use uh, in in the creation of of anything of merit. Uh, I was right. 
but he says that the dust might be usable to sell the spellcasters. So he would give you some of the money back that you would lose because of that. Very reasonable, reasonable gentleman. I will part with the coin accordingly. I mean, uh, the sapphire to get the coin is what I meant. Yeah, okay. Uh, and he, he will... Uh, so how much? Three and a half thousand gold, Robo Jamie. I, I assumed I was going a bit robo then, just by the reactions. Yep. Yep. Three and a half thousand. Uh, yeah. We have cash again. No. Oh, as you get that. Meanwhile, in the land of milk and honey, Gun Helga leads you uh, down uh, a series of streets until you get to uh, a very large restaurant. It is very colorful, mm -hmm. with a series of minarets on the top that are striped with two different colors. And uh, it looks more like a bastion than it does a restaurant. Mm -hmm. There's a large set of double doors on the front. And then she goes up, she opens the door and holds it open for you. Yep, I walk through. She closes it behind you, walks inside, and goes up and goes, Waiter, give table now. And the waiter just goes, I'm, yes, right, right this way. Uh, and leads you over uh, to a table when it is, it has two tablecloths on it. One is red, one is white. They're at 45 degree angles to each other. And there's a candle in the middle of the table and the two chairs. Uh, and Helga goes over, pulls a chair out, sits, little one. Sit down. Pulls the chair in, goes around and sits. Uh, and the waiter comes up and says, uh, Would you like the menu? Uh, and he goes, No, I want goulash. And the waiter just turns to you like, uh, uh, Goulash sounds great. All right, then I'll bring you the goulash. Uh, drinks? How it goes. <laughs> Yes. Vodka. You heard the lady? Leave bottle here. Mm. <laughs> uh, and the, the waiter comes back a short while later uh, with two uh, small glasses and a bottle of vodka. Mm -hmm. Elga passes him the small glass back and takes the bottle. <laughs> And the waiter sort of gives you your small glass. It's like it's like a shot glass. Uh, and Helga is like, "When food come?" And the waiter's like, "Oh, um, uh, it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be too long. I don't. I will go check, shall I?" And Helga goes, "Yes, you go check. It come here in five minutes, or I have word with manager." I just I kind of just be like thank you to the to the waiter as he leaves. No, wait a second. Sorry. The customer service look. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, and uh, Helga just sits there in silence with the bottle in one hand, taking a drink from it every now and again. Pause a bit in yours. Cheers. Mm hmm. So, uh, um, <clears throat> are you, uh, are you from around here? No. No? Oh, where are you from, if you don't mind me asking? I do mind asking. Fair enough. But I tell you anyway. I am from Sigil, this big city. What brought you out here? I don't like big city. Yeah, me too, actually. Mm. And I kill man. Oh. Crush his head between legs. <laughs> it's like your actions, man. You're really knocking me off. <laughs> <laughs> what, 
What did he do? Put head between legs. Like a fool. Duh. Yeah, yeah. Mm, it is foolish to do that. It is, it is. Mm. Honestly, I'm glad no one tried it with me because maybe the same thing would happen. Mm, duh. Mm. Sometimes, though, you want someone put head between legs. <laughs> but only if you ask first. Yes. Consent important. Mm. Yes. Duh. And out of surprise, Gun has actually spilt a bit of her vodka, like I just spilt my fucking water. <laughs> and she's like, yes, mm -hmm. I agree wholeheartedly. Yes. So, uh, so, um, what do, what do you do here besides work at the, uh, at the, the forge? I eat and I sleep and exercise. Mm. Only exercise to work and to eat. See. I like it to, I like to exercise because I like to eat. Duh, it's good. It's good. So I'd like you, to eat goulash. What's your routine like? What's your set like? What's your weights like? I do not know. I just find person I don't like. I punch them until they fall down. Oh my god! I do the exact <laughs> same thing. Mm, it's a good workout. It, it's an amazing workout, isn't it? Though. Duh. Mm. Nothing like a fight to get the blood pumping. It's not fight. They not fight back. They know better. <laughs> See Jamie and Gun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can mm. I can relate. So what what's the heaviest thing you've ever lifted? I don't know. I don't know how much things weigh. So, about that goulash, huh? Da is good. It's mm. made with cabbage. Oh, cabbage. Nice. Da. Mm. Don't get many cabbages where I live. Or did live. That, that is bad. Mm. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry too. Da. It's okay. Sometimes it's good to be sad. Yeah, it is. Da. Yeah. I'm not sad though. No. No. <laughs> um, more vodka <laughs> just kind of like making really awkward small talk yeah uh, Helga never asks you a question nope. at all never initiates anything nope and Gunn is very aware that she is mainly talking and it's really freaking her out yeah and after a short while uh, the waiter brings over these two bowls of this purplish colored liquid that has what looks like ice cream in it as well uh, like these balls of, of what looks to be something creamed uh, and uh, it has like thin like uh, pieces of meat sticking out of it that have been stained purple by the broth mm -hmm. uh, this is goulash? duh huh. doesn't look like that where I'm from I'll uh, eat a bit oh it tastes horrible creamed red cabbage Mm. Yeah. Reheated creamed red cabbage. Oh. But I'll be like, mmm. It's delicious. Da is good. Mmm. It's, it's really good. Da. Is this your favorite food? And she's just eating mouthfuls of it. Da. I have every day. Every day. Da. And she's finished it. She puts the spoon in the bowl. Whoa. I can admire that. Da. So. <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> Stevie. <laughs> You're fucking terrible. Uh, uh, so what's what's the the big gossip around the the bazaar? What's what's going on? I don't know. I don't talk to many people. You don't? No. Why not? Do not need to. Do you have problem with meat? No. Eat food then. It uh, go cold. Okay. 
<laughs> Let's eat it really quick. Like, are you done with food? Mm, thank you. Mm. Good. And she gets up. She goes to leave, and the waiter's like, eh, "Miss Statsby," and she goes, "No, it will not be." And leaves. I'll uh, I'll follow after her, and I'll I'll pay the guy. <laughs> <laughs> She's he's like, hey, two two silver." Yep, that, that's fine. And I give him ten. <laughs> and he's like, "Keep the change." Thank you. Is she here often? Nah. Um, no. Wait. Whoa. Whoa. He's <laughs> like, "Oh, um." Yes, every day, twice a day. I give him a gold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ten silver is gold, so. Oh yeah, I give him another. <laughs> okay. All right. I just I follow after them back to where these guys are. I guess I'll be like, "Bye, it was lovely having dinner with you." No, it was good. Lunch but... nice. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Duh. Uh, maybe I'll see you again soon. Duh. She goes back inside. Break over. Okay. Bye. And Gun and uh, Gun and Helga were gone all of about yeah. ten minutes. <laughs> it felt like an eternity. <laughs> I'll return to the group. I'll go up to catch up with you guys. Uh, yeah, that was quick. I believe the rest of you will have probably gone to Alderis. To get some blue dragon steak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Probably. Depending on how big the market is, we might not have got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you've got there. minutes. Yeah. You get there and you sit down, and then a good couple of minutes later, you've just put your orders in, and gun arrives. Oh hey. Ah, I thought you were going to dinner. I did. Oh, did it not go well? No, it was great. Oh, so when's the wedding? That's pretty quick. What? Never mind. Yeah, that's what I thought. Tristan had his mouth full of robot. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. I need to shut the fuck up in case he gets a mouth full of coins. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a silver next time. It's a money earning business for him at this point. <laughs> cost yeah. me an arm and a leg. I wonder what that actually would cost me. No, that's human transmutation. I feel... Mm. But no, I had a lovely dinner. Helga is a very lovely lady. Well, well, dinner. Hmm. well, I guess you're probably too full to eat with us now, then. Yeah. Shame. Actually, yeah, it was, it was yeah. a lot. Mm. Good, enjoyable grub. Yeah, it was really nice, actually. Mm. Local mm. cuisine. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure you talked about a lot. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's not actually from here. She's from a place called Sigil. She's mm. a big city. I think it's pronounced Sigil. Don't you dare. Don't nice you dare. Sigil, yeah. Don't you dare. Uh, yeah, so what did you guys? Did you manage to uh, to to get some some money for the thing? Uh yeah. But that's nowhere near as interesting as uh, what your last ten minutes were. There were a very good ten minutes. I discovered she has incredibly powerful thighs. I mean you could tell that look at her. Mm. Just, just I mean, some, but some ten minute dates. I didn't even hear what you just said then. Oh, just lost now. <sighs> have to watch it was the probably bars. an attempt at a sick burn. It was. <laughs> <laughs> so it was definitely a better ten minutes than whatever you guys have been up to. Well, I mean, we we made three and a half thousand gold, so no. and we got to laugh at Tristan a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, it's still a bit of red there. Oh yeah, it's still there. It's it's. I don't know, red. Gun. There's still a lot of red all over your face. So. Mm. What, Ron? I said there's a lot of red all over your face. No, 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 no. You see, she was giving you an out. I no, I didn't need an out. I just sit back down and wait for food. All right. So as Elder F performs his wonderful. Uh, cooking for you once more. He places it in front of you again. Uh, and you have, uh, three of you have a wonderful lunch. The other one of you is probably having indigestion from goulash. I'm really trying not to think about how good it smells 
and how bad my stomach feels. Mm -hmm. And also the conflicting emotions between she was horrible to the waiter, a fucking brick wall, but mm, <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. still would. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take a quick break right there before we carry on. Yeah, that seems suitable. Yeah. <laughs> mm. We'll be back in five minutes.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're back with more whatever this is. I'm not quite sure. So uh, you have your delicious luncheon once more. Uh, where would you like to go now? What would you like to do? Get that gate key. Uh, we need to find the gate key. Yeah, that's no. the only pressing matter. Okay. We definitely had someone to get that off, right? We weren't just... You were told yeah. that you could we buy one here. We we could find it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So but we didn't just have like the ethereal idea of a gate key? Hmm. No. Well, let's go do that then. All right. So do you want to try and find a gate key salesman? Yeah. Just of words I didn't think I was going to say. Who we know that's in the know. Our boy Gideon. It's and been about it? 20 minutes. Well, we can, yeah. No, it's been longer now. You had your food. Yeah. And you had all the time where you were wandering around between shops trying to not sell gems to a crotchety old lady. That, that. But it's probably getting okay. close to the hour at this point. Look at our boy. Yeah, we, yeah might as well. All We're right. not going to be here all the time. You know, it's a rare treat. So you go and find Gideon Goodman. All right. Good golly gosh. Good golly gosh, Gideon Goodman. Of Gideon Goodman guides. <laughs> what a good guy. All right, let's stop now. Uh, <laughs> so you find Gideon, he's just finishing up the tour when you get there, and he turns around and he's like, oh, it's good to see you again, my friends. How are we doing today? Have a good day today? Hi, great. Very, right. very lucrative day. Yeah, I mean, this one's had a date. It's great. Oh, really? Who do you have a date with? Uh, we had lunch, and it was Helga. Oh, you went and had lunch? Goulash. Goulash, yeah. It's disgusting, right? No. Oh, it's like that. Oh, I see. All right, then. They're in there. Ten whole minutes. All right. And he leans into you and goes, if you know what, if you want to know something, blue... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. That was perfect timing. That blue was... what? Blue. What What could be blue? Let me tell um, you a secret. Blue... Oh, the blue man group, perhaps. The blue man group, Tobias Funke. She's a never nude. There are dozens of them. Now we know. Dozens. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> well, Her? the suspense is literally killing me. Alternatively, blue. That date was very fast. She's related to Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, very Quick, put a, put a ring on it now. There's an in there we want to guess on. Okay. Mm. Uh, I am the host now, it, I guess. and we're all over the place. I'm still me. Well, I don't know who you, I find am, the, you find the gate key salesman. It is one gold. Oh, hang on. I think I'm the DM now. Steve is the DM now. I have no idea. We find the gate key. It's one gold. Oh, holy shit. What do we do with it? Uh, we buy it for a start. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You want it. Uh, we go back to the lady that offered us a nice boat ride. Oh, we and take she, a nice she, boat ride. She, and she also happens to have um, Storm Giant blood, right? Yes. Oh, of course. She She'll have to check. Much. She'll have to check in the back. <laughs> she checks in the back. Fucking tons. Oh, yeah, she's rolling in the stuff. Yeah, no, at this point, the market's been flooded with Storm Giant blood too much mm -hmm. that the price has crashed. Uh, she literally couldn't give it away. Uh, so, do we, do we want it in liters or gallons? More or less, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could take that off our hands. Yeah. So you get some storm giant blood. Okay. Um, you want so the we... the Mario Resurrector at Why Rot it? Oh yeah. If you got I mean, one, if you've got one, one. yeah. yeah. Streamline things. Uh it just came through. It's a bit of a rare item, so we're looking at a bit more expensive on that front. Has it been tested yet, though? Because we happen to have a Namari. It hasn't been tested. You know what? I'll knock the price down. 15 gold. I think that's no, that that sounds that's doable, 
Yeah, that sounds like mm. steel to me. Oh, actually, can you check in the back for some fate too? Fate? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll have a look. Uh, she has a look. I'll add a fate. As fate would have it. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't suppose um, I present the, uh, the pocket watch. Could you tell me anything new about this? You know, what it actually does, perhaps? Uh, yeah, she looks it over, uh, says, tells time. All right, but it doesn't like tell our time. Well, it doesn't have to tell your time. I said it tells a time. Huh. Fair enough. Uh, I yeah, what time it tells. Oh, well, I know what time it tells. Chico time. <laughs> uh, has she ever played Monster Hunter? <sighs> no, uh, just Dauntless. Damn. Because she's exceptionally cheap and didn't have friends that would commit the Monster Hunter PC. So instead decided to invest heavily in Battle for Azeroth as a tank and hates it now. <laughs> bad move, bad move. <laughs> Super was. She does say she's playing a lot of Sniper Elite 4, though, which is pretty cool. That's good to hear. Yeah. Does she have a Twitch channel? Uh, nah. Hmm. Stream is for noobs. <laughs> so she can't be found at twitch.tv forward slash young jinxie. No, nah, it's a really good one that's there. No. He likes to play Proto Storm decks in standard because he's a prick. Plus, it never fucking works. Fucking Paradox engines rotated out. Saddest times ever. Can't play none of my bullshit decks anymore. Oh, no. Nah, it's, it's still bullshit. I she still seems to have strong good. opinions on this. She, she does. She super does. Magic the Gathering has reached. I mean, if anything was going to, mm. it's cardboard crack. Yep, comes for us all. Yep. Um, so, message from Stu. He has totally lost internet. I think we're getting on grand on our own. Yeah, I think so. Resolving yeah. pretty well. We've made a lot of progress. Yeah. I think this could be worse. Yep. Could be way worse. Hmm. Like this is a really good resolution to the campaign. I think we'll get the we're answers we seek. Doing a good yeah. job pretty quickly. So we have no money back. We've got no money. Yeah. We're all We've rich. got a lot of the blood. I mean how how much XP do we get? Oh like nine million, surely. I mean legitimately if we get another like two thousand five hundred we level up, so I mean going absolutely killed that day and I think that's worth some XP. Yeah, I think we should go back yeah. and kill the old woman. Yes. That will get us the XP that we need. I it should will. have been... Oh, no, I haven't been ousted. <laughs> I'm like the, the, the DM in full power. <laughs> I don't have to lean across my screen. So while you were away, Stuart, um, we do it. We bought the gate key. Mm -hmm. We resurrected the Mari. By buying a um, Mari resurrector. Yeah, we got mm. some Storm Giants blood. We got liters of the stuff, apparently. Yeah, it was flooded the market and it crashed, so... Yeah, unfortunately, they were all out of fate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what can you do? The, yeah, my watch tells time, just not our time, but it tells time, apparently. It tells no Chico one. time. No <laughs> Chico time, time, that was it, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Chico time. Jesus. No yeah, way. sorry about that. <laughs> my, my internet just completely vanished. Oh, no. Happens to all of us. Oh, what is going on? I'm trying to fix the cameras, but I've lost somebody. <laughs> you haven't lost anyone. Be lost. But everyone's in the right place apart from Stevie is I mean. I know, but I can't figure out which one is Stevie's <laughs> Don't worry, I'm in the fucking control seat now, you guys. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> no! <laughs> I feel my power being taken away. I've <laughs> 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 been ousted. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie takes a pint of exhaustion in real life. Fare thee well, oh faithful friend. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I let the power go to my head. I thought I would rule forever. No king rules forever, my son. Oh, wait, revelations galore. It's a world, it's a world of Warcraft, quote. Wrath of the Lich King. Yeah, Wrath of the Irishman. Anyway. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't remember where we were now. <laughs> Something about game. blue. We went, we went off to the <laughs> That's right. <laughs> She's related to Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> I know that she said never nude. <laughs> we were left alone for like 15 seconds before that happened. I was gone for like <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> you know, time time happens differently in the plane. Yeah, I mean, guns uh, day only took 10 minutes. So like, we know how time can feel. Oh, oh so it's like I've been gone half a hell go. Mm. Yeah. Gideon leaned in and said something, I'll tell you a secret, and then it was like, blue, and then <laughs> right. like, blue what? He said blue roses, and winked. Okay. <laughs> you know, I like what we got out of it the first time around. <laughs> I just want to clip Susie's face down and make it into a gif. <laughs> I just want to clip that whole bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to clip that. That's going to be a highlight. So, uh, Gideon leans back and goes, So, uh, whereabouts going to take you today, friends? Uh, what is it we're looking Forest. for again? Gate key. You say, you say a gate key? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Well, if you want one of those, I can show you where you can get one of those. You're going to need a gay keyhole as well, though. No, gate, gate key. Oh, sorry, I didn't understand your accent. Could have gone very, very wrong. Oh, very <laughs> I'm, nice. I'm holding oh, a hot tea. Right. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Don't laugh. Don't laugh, Stuart. Don't laugh. Uh, 69. <laughs> 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 what has happened? There's been a disruption, and we've just lost it. <laughs> Okay, we're back in the room, and we're back in the room. Everyone, focus in. So, do you know where we can find one of these keys? Oh yeah, old man Annan will help you. Old man who now? Annan. I don't know what his last name is. You know, someone told me once it was Annan, which would make his name Annan Annan. Uh, but I'm not sure that that's right. <laughs> Stevie. <laughs> But whatever the case is, he's been selling gate keys here for even longer than I've been here. Well, if you show us them, that would be great. He stands himself up straight and he puts his hands under his suspensions and he's like, oh, Of course I can. I'm Gideon Goodman, guys. I get you where you're going. And he slaps himself with his suspender bits. I'm still working on it a bit. Mm hmm. Come on, let's let's get you going. Uh, and he leads you once again in his trademark way of round, winding streets and up alleyways and everything. Uh, and eventually, uh, you find yourself uh, in front of a tent, uh, a rounded tent. Um, more like it's kind of like a like a bivouac, like a cloth tent. Um, and uh, there, there is a small um, awning out the front. And sat on the awning uh, with their legs crossed on the floor, with a an array of small pebbles in front of them, uh, is a very uh, elderly-looking man uh, with uh, no hair or no beard, no eyebrows, but he's always like got the furrowed brow look. So he actually looks like he has eyebrows. It takes you a couple of seconds to realize that that's just a furrowed brow and not eyebrows. You know, like when you look at the rock. Holy shit, it's Devin Townsend. <laughs> and uh, when when you get close, he's got a hand on both of his knees. And when you get close, he looks up to you with a pensive but uh, grumpy old man look on his face. Well, hopefully this goes smoothly because my patience for old people has been... Has been back. Uh, hi there, are you Anon? And Gideon leans in and is like, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, Annan's mute. Good to know. Um, if it helps, I can read lips. If it helps. Um, 
We're looking for uh, a gate key. Uh, we're looking for one specifically to the plane of Earth so that we can get to... Uh, the Hall of Glittering Feasts. He nods, reaches over and picks up a small, sharpened, uh, sharp, almost like flint-like rock and puts it in the palm of his hand. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, how, how, what will this go for? It's quite, hmm. I don't know how you'd give an answer. Um, he puts it down on a small piece of brown paper and folds it up uh, and, and uh, ties a small amount of string around it puts it to the side gets out a notebook he writes down something on the notebook and hands it to you uh, take it. and uh, it says uh, on it it says a spell. Hmm. What do you mean a, a spell? Like, would you like me to perform a spell for you, or are you asking to take one from me? Uh, takes the notebook back, writes down, uh, and it says, permanently mine. Hmm. Ah. Uh, Okay. And don't give him the fire one. I wasn't going to. Um I haven't actually used this yet, but I take out my ritual book and uh take the pages for uh unseen servant. Okay. And hand them. Okay. Across. He takes it. He fans them out in his hand, and you see as the runes begin to dance with this blue light, each of them forming into the circle of the arcane runes, which you know to be how a wizard would cast a spell. As he draws them out, you see as the runes begin to appear on your skin for a moment, Tristan, before, not painfully, but uh, quite a strange and uncomfortable sensation you feel this pull on, all, on your skin as the runes are pulled off of your skin and into this circle. As he folds the book up. But he folds a piece of the paper up. Puts them to the side. Smiles. And hands you. I take the gate key. Alright. You may never learn to cast Unseen Servant again. Right. Damn it, I had some plans and shenanigans. Oh well. If Gun had date number two. <laughs> All pranks. Literally. Well, that's a, a weird price for a thing, but I at least we get to keep the money. Though is it like we we've, we've paid some strange prices. <laughs> You've done that and then what was the other weird thing? The fate. Fate. No, you had the fate. Oh no, yeah. it's more of a curse, more than a payment. Uh, the take the vial of water to a beautiful place. Give up a magical weapon. Give up a magical weapon. Yeah. Um, have the spirit of a guy end up in my sword, and now he can't speak because his throat was torn out on the way. Yeah, by a bill hook. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. It was the whole thing where Gun had to put, you know, her head on the anvil. Oh, a little knock. Uh, and just now, Ronan had his hand shot off. Had had a hole shot in his hand. We had to like um, partially drown Namari to cure her of cannibalism. Yep. Friendly waterboarding. Uh, nothing that says friends like waterboarding. Anyway. So, um, at this point, Gideon's like, "Well, uh, that that took less time than it usually does. Um, anywhere else you want to go?" Uh, I don't really know. Does anyone else want anything? Uh, I don't think so. I think they're just about 
is all the business we had. Fair enough. Uh, I turn to Anon and to kind of like thank you for your time and start walking away. He smiles and nods. That was a very, very strange price, though, to be honest. But I was, uh, didn't even use it yet. So. What can you do? I mean, I, 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 I was thinking of names, but it's pointless now. Oh, that's like Tristan just had to get rid of his unborn children. That no one would ever see or hear. And just make things float. Ah, like Drake's child. (laughs) (laughs) The unseen servant. The perfect child. Okay, okay, moving on. I'm very proud of that one. That was good. So... <laughs> so, um, is there anything else you'd like? Before to do? we leave Gideon, I'm just like, yo, where can I pick up the the, the hint? No, oh, um, you know, when when are you leaving? Like soon. All right. Give give me half an hour. I'll meet you at I'll meet you at Gallows. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Cool. Cuz right. I tell I like um yeah, yeah, cool. I'll sorry, I'll meet you there. All right. Don't worry. Um, it is your is your rice smile and have a wink. I'm immediately worried. Yeah, right. maybe you could get a painting commi- uh, commissioned. And and Gideon shoots off in, into the crowds. Um, so I'll catch up with the rest of the group and go say, hey, so we're leaving tomorrow, right? I mean, it's going to take six days. I feel like as soon as possible, really, because we can rest on the way. It's the yeah. only thing I have to follow up on. I can't go just yet. Ooh. Another date? No. Good good night kiss? Yeah. No. Is that what you're after? No. Well, uh, well, I mean, if it's personal, private business, then I won't pry. It's incredibly personal, private, and business, yes. You're getting a mm. statue chiseled of her? No. That was overly defensive. It was. It was oddly defensive. Look. Is it more of a bust as opposed to a full statue? Well, how dare you talk about a lady's bust, Tristan? I thought you were more of a gentleman than that. Wow. It's wow, like, that's a big well. misjudgment of character. Whoa. <laughs> it's like the statues in Assassin's Creed. Synchronization <laughs> point. <laughs> I would tell Anyway, no. Uh, here's a question: Do we have a place to stay? We can go back, I suppose, to the place, the inn. Yeah, we had rooms there, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. they were fairly expensive as well. It was expensive, and it was not a very good night's sleep. Hmm. We can maybe find somewhere else then. I mean, we've got a guide. Yeah, we'll find them again, and. Town did like point us in the right direction. Yeah, but I mean, only three of us really need to worry about it. I feel like Gun's got herself covered. Mm, presumptuous. Oh, you're gonna have a nice conversation that's gonna take you all all the way through the night to the wee hours. You're not gonna yeah. need. You know, Helga, Helga can you know, connect, go connect on a deeper, you know, intellectual level. Mm-hmm. Helga can go introduce you to the other three walls and the roof that make up her house. <laughs> <laughs> She's a lovely woman. So, I while Gun so goes to find Gideon, what are the rest of you doing? I or not? That's the question. Um, I'm sort of like trying to figure out whether they would that everyone else would think it was bad to go back and get more food but i'm already ready for more food it's been 10 minutes uh yeah that's about right i feel like we just loiter <laughs> oh. have we tried the dessert menu no hmm. what was it that guns said that they had what was it that 
I go go lash. It sounds pretty horrendous, but I want to try it. All right. I don't. No, I super do. This is like actually having siblings. <laughs> Tristan, do you want to go to dinner? <laughs> oh yeah, go on then. <laughs> I hate all of you. This is fine. Okay, so Tristan and and Ronan are going to dinner. Yeah. What are you doing, Tilly? Are you going with them? Ah, my guess. I don't want to right. go around. The three of you will go get goulash. I'm a fucking guy in goulash. So, as you go and you uh, find the place uh, where they sell goulash, you go inside and the waiter's like, Oh, uh, welcome. Welcome. Would you like a table? Yes, please. Ah, uh, yes. All right, table for three? Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Uh, welcome, welcome. By the way, uh, welcome uh, to the Crimson Square. Da, da. <laughs> uh, and he sits you down at a table, and it looks it's the same as the one that that Gun and uh, in fact, it's the same one. They pull up a chair to it. Oh, we're reusing the set. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, Brings a menu to you, to you all. Ah, uh, yeah, don't need that goulash. Oh, right, of course, yes. Uh, uh, goulash for me as well, please. I'm gonna look at the menu. Okay, uh, and the menu has like goulash and like borscht, uh, and like uh, yeah, pierogi. It just says soup in all capitals. It's definitely not soup. And then vodka. Is there a dessert? Oh, yeah, it says bread. You have to wait in line <laughs> the, for that. I, I thought the, the vodka was the dessert menu. <laughs> no, no, that's the drinks menu. And then the dessert menu says bread. You know what? I'll take the soup and some bread. Right, of course, yes. I'll bring, bring it all right to you. And it's about a five minute wait before the two bowls of purple goulash are put in front of you and the brown liquid is put in front of you, Tilly. Cool. Uh, and a slice of bread which is sliced wonkily like it's been sliced out it's not sliced bread all right we're pre betty white here really i never would have guessed yeah let's put on it it's a very thin slice of bread yeah who um, looks like they've had it worse us or tilly really oh. uh tilly looks tilly's look like something out of a diagram for the bristol stool scale Come on. Well, guess I'll eat the bread. <laughs> uh, the bread tastes of rocks. Probably eating mm -hmm. worse bread. Dwarf food. And the goulash <laughs> tastes absolutely horrendous. It tastes like overboiled creamed cabbage. Red cabbage. Mine tastes terrible for the first bite, and then it doesn't <laughs> for the rest. Great. Mine says terrible for the whole thing, and I scoff it all the way down. Like, yeah. So, as they're eating, meanwhile, uh, outside of Gallo's metallurgy, mm -hmm. uh, you arrive just after Gideon, uh, and Gideon has uh, a box of chocolate shaped like a heart and a bouquet of blue roses. Oh, God. And he hands them both over to you as you get there, and he's like, I, I got you in this one, don't you worry. Go get them, champ. The chocolates? Really? And he pats you on the back towards the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'll just, I'll go in. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Galler is there at the, at the, uh, at the forge. He turns around and he's like, Look, don't, hey, don't. Can it? And for me? No. Oh, all right then. Oh. No. Please don't, please, 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 just don't. Mm. I'm already, mm. no. Forges are red. So is your face. And those roses are blue. I'll leave you alone now. Thanks. Mm. 
And girl he looks turns, like she's about to puke. She he turns hard. around and he's like, you can hear, he's like pulling the levers on the forge. You can just, in between the sounds of metal falling, you can hear him going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and after what seems like an eternity, uh, Helga walks out. And she's there and she walks out and she's wiping something off her hands and she stops. And the eyebrow raises up. She's like... Gunhild. Hi. What are you doing here? I, uh, I just came back in. I'm, I'm... I thought I'd come see you before I went. I left. We had such a good lunch together. Duh. Mm-hmm. You bring flowers? Yeah, uh, um, someone I know said that you might like these. I don't know. If it's too much, I can I can throw them away. I'm um, sorry. She puts the cloth rag down on the side. And she steps towards you. Uh, and she sort of bends down, you know, like squats down in front of you. Mm-hmm. And she's at eye level at this point with you because she's very tall. And she looks you in the eye and goes, and as she reaches out and she takes them off, she goes, duh, they were right. She leans in and gives you a peck on the cheek. Good is like scarlet at this point. It was good lunch. Mm-hmm. I enjoy goulash. It was good. Duh. It was good to meet other women who can crush man's leg between thighs. Hell yes. Hmm. It's nice meeting you, Gun. You're a very nice lady. You are too. Duh. Maybe one day you come back and I show you how not crush woman's leg between flies. I would like that very much. Duh. Mm-hmm. And she pats you on the head. I have to go back to work now. Already had break. Okay. I'll, um, next time I'll hold you to it. No. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like a really awkward little wave back. <laughs> All right. And as you go to leave, do you turn around at the door? Yes. You turn around there. She's. You see, she is taking a sniff of one of the roses and has a little smile on her face as she walks into the back. Gun is walking on air. <laughs> Nothing can touch her right now. She's invincible. <clears throat> Meanwhile, at the goulash place, I would like the, all three of you to make constitution saving throws. Hey, I only ate the bread. I think I'd like to make mine at disadvantage because as soon as Tilly's not going to eat the soup, I'm going to eat the soup. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's disadvantage. <laughs> yep. Still I mean... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the most proud I've ever seen you make the save. <laughs> 19. Oh, I'm super fine. 20. Uh, oh, I have a constitution. 20 disadvantage. Wow. Uh, I have an 11. Okay. So, despite the protesting noises your stomach makes, uh, the two goulash eaters find yourselves uh, able to keep it down. By the way, the soup actually tasted like cow pat. That's fine. Yeah, like a real like pig slurry. Mm. Not a hint of it tasting like actual food at any point there. Like, I mean, I had it, so it is food. Just like actual, you're fairly certain it was actual diarrhea. Um, but you ate it. However, Tilly, there is a something in the pit of your stomach. You're fairly certain it's the bread. And you're fairly certain that that bread has morphed into a ball of needles because your stomach feels absolutely horrendous right now. And you wish you could throw up because you want to get it out, but the, your body won't let you. The bread won't let you, and you feel horrible. Ah, I see why that day ended quickly. Mm-hmm. How, how, how was the goulash? Yeah, it was okay. Eh, not bad worse. Tristan, when was the last time you had anything without magicking it into a different taste? 
Uh, when? When were we in down now? A while ago. That doesn't count if it was good food, though. Mm. All food to me yeah. is not good food. To be fair, I don't think I'm a very good judge of character. I, I would eat anything that was put in front of me. So, yeah, I mean, if anyone has any suggestions next time round, you know, just uh, do you want a carrot test? Like a tomato? I suppose I could do that. Like just for you know shits and gigs. No, I'm good. Normally, I don't think that bread tasting better would make me feel better. <laughs> this is that bad. At least you didn't take the soup. It tasted like rocks, and I also feel like I have eaten rocks. At least it wasn't shitty rocks. Mm. I I don't know what good rocks taste like. Oh, no, no, no. If you had the soup, it would have tasted like shit as well. Oh, okay. Ew. Yeah. Why do you know what shit tastes like? Uh, <laughs> <Don't>... <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of thing I just shrug at. Yeah, it's only it just it happens. You went full commando style in the swamp, like head to toe. He yeah, went, did you see? Yeah, did you like? Uh, at this point, the waiter comes over and is like, uh, "Did you enjoy your food?" Oh, it was lovely. Thank you very much. Good, wonderful. Uh, would you like to see the dessert menu? No, thanks. I'm quite full up now, actually. Wonderful. Uh, that will be 27 gold, please. Uh, I'd like to incite that because that's a lot of gold. Sure. Also, you massive cowards. What do you mean? Get dessert, you cowards. I mean, the I bread just, wasn't dessert. I honestly, it's just because the other two said no first. I don't want to be rude. That's a lot, by the way, 26. He is completely truthful. This appears to be the exact price for the food in this restaurant. And there is no element of malice to his voice. He is simply be doing his waiterly deeds. He is the customer service. Yeah, uh, then I'll take it out of my pocket and pay for it all. You're a saint, Ronan. Wonderful. I hope you enjoyed your meal today at the Crimson Square. Do come again soon. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, no, thanks. Great. Wonderful. Well, I get up to leave. I very weakly get up to leave. <laughs> all right. So, uh, I'm assuming you're all meeting at the docks to go find Kitty. All right. So, uh, you eventually find Kadiva by a much smaller boat. Uh, she's wearing very obvious looking armor and uh, she's a very obvious looking person. Uh, She's by a much smaller boat, uh, which has uh, painted on the side of it uh, in, like, just sloshed on white paint. Uh, it says the Whirling Wasp on this little boat. It's got one one triangular sail uh, and a big wheel at the back with a really tall deck. Uh, and Kadiva is currently, like, tying some ropes on. We should have bought rations and stuff for this multi-day journey. I feel like I'm pretty full for the next foreseeable future. I, I feel like uh, rations are so ridiculously cheap. I'm not even going to bother saying and it, like that they you need to actually I care about them. That we always have them. Yeah, yeah. I, I hand wave. I hand wave the five copper pieces it takes for a day's worth of ration. That's fair. Well, are we... we just do it the old Brit Navy way? Just everybody have hard tag. Yeah, or like eat Tilly. Please don't do that. Tilly's the absolutely the wrong choice. There's not enough food. They eat Tilly, then that means next day we have to kill somebody else. And then again, like you can't kill me because I'm I'm the one that will make it taste like you're not eating person. Therefore, if you close your eyes, it's guilt free. I don't know. I think halflings taste kind of like bacon. I feel like you're preaching to the wrong choir with whether it's going to taste good or not. <laughs> uh, look, we're on a boat. I will kick and scream and throw all of you over the side if you try to eat me. That's fair. <laughs> I'll dimension dough back up. <laughs> I will throw you back off. How many times I'll do you dimension dough? I'll dimension dough you down with me first. <laughs> and then back. 
I have two slots. Wow, we haven't even do... been at air sea yet, and we're already talking of killing each other. <laughs> we got deep. Sea. Uh, but it's okay because I remembered to buy rations. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but we're not leaving today, right? Is what's the deal? Well, as soon as really, because it's going to take six days to get there in general. So, I thought Gun had a thing. I, 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 yeah. I, live I mean, we can we can wait. Your thing sounded very important. If, if you need any help with it as well, like, we'll be happy to. <laughs> I mean, we're doing all this for Namari. Like, if, if we can set aside some time for you. No, I'm good. I'm good. I did what I wanted to. It's all done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will be revisited at a later date, hopefully. But uh, right now, I'm good to go. Let's go on the boat. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bit my tongue on that one. Oh, Good. party. I'll mm -hmm. teach you. All right. No. Uh, at this point, Kadiva is has turned around and he's like, suddenly about which is like, are y'all just going to sit there and talk all day? You've just been stood there for like five minutes talking. Haven't even said hi. Hi, Kadiva. Hi, Kadiva. Hey. hey. I wave at her and then go sit down on the boat looking very unhappy with myself. Uh, Little Miss, what are you doing on my boat? Ah, uh, well. Hey. You offered to take us to somewhere. The place. Yeah. I ain't no goddamn taxi. You got to tell me first before you want to go. You can't just march in here and sell my boat. Tristan does the talking. <laughs> yeah, but you're already there. <laughs> that is a fair point, yeah. Tristan does the talking. I understand that you want to get going, but like, you know, at least be like, hey, Kadiva, do you mind taking us to this place? Instead of just being like, you know, sitting down on my boat. That That's what this was going to be. And then we had the whole like five minute conversation and tried to make Gun as embarrassed as possible because he went on a first date very recently. Oh, He's congratulations, Gun. Um, and I'm purposely making sure that Ronan's in between me and Gun when I say that. So like, sorry, we got a little bit sidetracked on the greetings, but we did come down here intentionally to uh, say, hi, how are you? Um, how's things going and how long... Uh, would it take to get ready? Well, as it stands right now, I had a feeling you'd be coming to down today. I just thought you might have asked first. Um, but yeah, I'm really going about, I don't know, like 30 minutes time. Can we sit your boat until then? Now, do you need any help getting ready? Yeah, if you don't mind, I got some nuts to tie. Get all the right. rigging all in order. It's only me crewing this one, so it's a bit of more, a little more complicated. Point me where and what to do, and I'll do it. All right, so she shows you around, shows you how to tie certain knots uh, and basically busies you uh, sorting out the boat. And about 20 minutes later, uh, the time you see, uh, she goes, right, well, we're all set up and ready to go. Uh, shall we get going? Oga marks more. I can do. All right. Hope you brought some food with you. We did. We did. All right. Well, jolly good. I got myself six packed lunches all the way from Eldenax. Oh, gonna shit. Take six days to come back. I didn't think. Oh, yeah, I got six days for the way back as well. Don't you worry. I should have ordered a load of meat and just brought that. And, and as you say that, the boat begins to cast off. And just, <laughs> well, it's too late to go now. <laughs> get, get the violin out and just start playing some sad music. <laughs> but in black powers activate. Mm -hmm. And then for the rest of the trip, it's all, um, you know, quite romantic uh, music, you know. I'm just, I'm just like, well, working it, on some new things. It's sea shanties about waiting for your love back home. Mm, that sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, some on the yeah, violence, some on the new loot as well. There's a period in the middle of the night where Gunn wakes up and sits up and looks at Tristan sleeping and just measures her hands around his throat for a minute. Just... Just yeah. a, just a thing. It would it would fit. Mm. It's like one a, hand would probably do. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like putting your fingers around a toilet roll holder. Like And with about the same <laughs> strength to it as well. Whatever it's like it hits the third play of the day. Uh I'll do the just 
give Gunn the chance to do some like you know pad work, just jabs and stuff with hands, moving around a little bit, being a little dexterous, let her work out a little bit of anger because otherwise we will have to just not waste Tristan and Eden anyway. So day three gets a bit of a Pirates of the Caribbean vibe, but then it does go back. Day three, I appreciate very much. <laughs> On day three, you're all like, oh my god. Day three is probably about when I am no longer plagued by this terrible bread. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, you, the, when it comes out, it's like, you know in the um, cowboy movies where they spit into the spittoon? Don't need to know this. Oh, like, no, just do it overboard. Do it overboard, we'll never hear it. Oh no, it hits something metal on the way down and ding! Floating in the air. Yeah, wherever it goes, you hear a ding! There's no discernible difference in the suit. <laughs> it's, what has uh, even happened this session? What has this session been? It's doing the sprinkler. I, I lost the chance to have an invisible child. That's okay, awesome. moving, moving on. Wow, uh, is there anything that you would like to do apart from defecate in these thick things? Uh, I want to try and chance Marm and practice shooting with Kadiva's gun. If she okay. has it on her. Uh, she does not. Ah, sad times. Yeah. It's okay, I'm going to stew the gun in the bag of holding anyway. Okay. Anything else anyone would like to do? Um. Oh, yeah. Tilly, can I have that spear? Ah, oh, sure, yeah. No, yeah. oh, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> not do anything good this thing. Day four. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually how the conversation goes yeah. as well. Hey, Tristan, yeah. put an apple on your head. <laughs> Day five. I stand right at the edge of the boat as well. So if you like, no matter what, you're losing it. Uh, we ha we have a map of, of of our continent, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's just our continent. No. I want to take a day going over that and thinking real hard about where isn't isn't good for me to be. Day five in the Big Brother house. The Big Brother boat. Uh, yeah. Um. I mean, like. Everywhere. It's sort of getting into trouble everywhere you go. <laughs> Draw on it a bunch. <laughs> Circle Karim. Do not go. Bad. <laughs> Once the maps out, we'll like sit down and be like, try and figure out the best place to have a, an inn, and then decide it probably still is River Meat Free. River Meat Free. Right in the center <clears throat> of the continent. Didn't we need to go to River Meat Free for some Also, else? out of curiosity. No. Yeah, Namari's uh, thingy. No, that's Lagrin. No, no, that's way, way, way north. Yeah. Fair enough. Also, just out of curiosity, um, the other continent, um, I wrote it down, but what was it called again? Um, Isarus. Yeah, Isarus. Mm -hmm. Do we know roughly whereabouts geologically from us no. that continent is? So. Right. There's a world map oh. coming down the pipeline. It's just obviously takes a long time to make a world map. Yeah. Uh, but the are, in the Warlands. Yeah, but there, there are there are three other continents that you currently know of: Metrica, which is where uh, Tilmerian was from, Isaros, uh, and Acacia. Acacia is like the the mortal enemy of Cowrin. That's to the mm. the, the north uh, the northwest, uh, up above where Vardal is. And the one that uh, Tom Marion was from is the same one that the uh, uh, the guy from Dunelm had yeah. went to the train. Akira had been yeah. there. I'm trying to remember his name. Yeah. Yes. The okay, case. So yeah. I almost called him Malakir. No, that's the Windlord. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, anything else? Excuse me. Anything else you'd like to do? Anything you want to go through that you've got on your travels so far? And uh, any? Do you, do you have any books? Anything I've, to read? I, I've got books to write in. So, I, I, to be honest, I I just assume that Tristan does a little bit of that every night anyway. Yeah, yeah. If he's got any time, like long rests. Mm -hmm. Or the while he's walking down the the roads and everything, and he's like, yeah. What's a good word to use for this? Yeah. And I've learned not to ask anymore. Uh, if there's along the way, uh, I just want to try and 
do some like while every now and then Gun looks like she's in a murder mood. <laughs> Uh, and I'm distracting Gun with, you know, a bit of training. I want to try and actually get actual training in, do some training and hand-to-hand stuff and, like, trying to get away from grapples and stuff like that. Just practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and eventually, when it comes to the time where on the horizon, you begin to see this growing shape. And Stuart spends a second to get the correct thing up here we go so you see on the horizon this this shadow appears and as you get closer it gets larger and larger Uh, until you see um just below you at this point this could even begins to rise uh, raise the boat as you get close a huge geographically impossibly huge mountain you, it is so hard to tell. The, the sense of scale is so completely off because this mountain goes on for what seems like forever. It, you cannot see the base of it. it, and you're in a you're in the plane of air. You can see, you know, down a long way, and it just goes on forever and ever. It is incredibly wide. Uh, the top of it looks like this great maw, this twisted, gnarled mouth with a set of broken and shattered teeth, reaching out. Uh, like a caldera of a volcano. And uh, the uh, and as you get close, Kadiva goes, Welcome to the Ma. This is as a result of Ogamark's anger. This is, uh, you don't quite like this place that much. Uh, but it's a gate to the plane of Earth. All you got to do is jump into the middle of it. Sounds fun. Okay, if we have a gate key, how was how would one? I'm wrapping and drop it in first, and then okay. about like five or ten seconds later, jump. Sounds easy enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And she maneuvers you above it, and as you look down now, there's this great mouth beneath you, this horrific shape, this twisted mass of, of these sharp, jagged rocks. Just behind, uh, just below you now, with this blackness in between them. All right, let it rip. <sighs> I uh, un- uh, unwrap the uh, gate key and drop it in. So you drop it in, begins falling, and you're a fair distance above this right now. So it begins falling. One, two. Three, four, five. Uh, and at this point, Kadir goes, It was nice meeting you. Have a good time on the plane of Earth. Uh, see ya. Bye, Kadir. Nice knowing ya. <laughs> Try and do the really cool sort of like salute and then just like dive off. All right. So as you all leap off into this blackness, you stare down at it as it comes. And a few moments before you hit, uh, you see a slight shimmer as the gate stone impacts, the gate key impacts something, and the portal just ruptures open, this glaring mass of twisting, like quicksand beneath you, with this gurgling roar that ripples out around you like the, like the jowls of a horrid beast before you hit the sand. And that's where we're on tonight's session. Three down, one to go. Dun dun dun. Heist? Heist? Heist. Heist, anyone? No. That was the plane of air. I feel like that was the best one so far. Uh, I think think everyone has plans to go back. I don't know. (laughs) Fair enough. What if we discover that? You know, someone has one of these grappling hooks that you want, and it was in the plane of air. Well, Telly doesn't know she wants that. <laughs> I'm pretty excited to just see like normal ground beneath us again at some point. Mm. Oh, out. Well, it, yeah, normal ground <laughs> might be a bit of a stretch, I would imagine. Yeah. 
I mean, I wasn't saying we had that now. In the future, on our own plane. Soon. Let me crack that bottle open. When we conclude our business and a sphinx serves us. Yeah, about that. Uh. Oh, god damn it. <sighs> fine. Be fine. Be fine. What's a couple of broken bones between friends? Ah, fuck, I'd be right. <laughs> My leg, usually. Hey, is it your right leg or your left leg? Probably, I think it's the right one, in all honesty. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and yet it hasn't actually been broken and mine says. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Maybe you've passed on the curse and now that Ronan's going to be the one to lose a leg. We'll find out someday. Someday. Somehow. Next week. Everyone loses a leg next week. No. Mm, I'd like to keep mine. I'd like to keep mine. For jumping and running. Yes. Yeah. Big fan of having my legs. Anyway, this is a really weird sign up. Wrap up? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that session. I'm still processing it myself. That was weird. Uh, was I'm going to give us XP for that. Sure, sure. I'll give yeah, you all I XP for encounters. that. Yeah, you, you, you definitely handled some encounters there. Yeah, that was. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. I feel like that goulash had a CR. <laughs> <sighs> it didn't learn an armor class. I definitely feel like we avoided a fight with that old lady. Mm -hmm. So there's XP there. It was I still feel like we could have killed her, and then that would have been good XP too. It's not a fight if she like. Wushu movie kicks you out of the door. It, one of the uses of Unseen Servant that I was going to do was send in the Unseen Servant to move everything in the shop. <laughs> oh. You okay there, Susie? No, that's just evil. Yeah, yeah. well. So, lady, just have your Unseen Servant push her every now and then. I know she wasn't a hag. She was. Yeah, she, uh, was. she super was. God damn it, I hate you all. Look, stop making old ladies. Not every old lady is a hag. I mean, the last old lady that we called a hag turned younger the longer we talked to her. So yeah, but she knows? also used mind magic. That's and true. She's like, oh, it's because people are after me. I don't believe her. Hag. And she did have a magic house. Hmm. It's, it's not a hag. Cool. There's been no hags in this game yet. Yeah. That we know of. That I know of. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining that. If you do want to see more of this, if it's your first time tuning in, you can catch up on YouTube where all the episodes are up. And when I remember to tell Susan the title of the episode, she puts them on YouTube. I've been slacking on that recently. I'll get back on track with that. Uh, but we have you, options this time around. Yeah, we have options. Uh, but if you did enjoy that, uh, please do give us a like on, on YouTube. Give us a follow on here because uh, we do this and we appreciate every piece of uh, feedback and and uh, everything that you give us. Uh, but if you did like this as well on Wednesdays, this Wednesday uh, and every other Wednesday, there is Bike Club as well, Susie on um, uh, DMs on this channel. Uh, and you can find a bunch of us on other streams or talking about role plays or uh, on our own streams or whatever may have you. So make sure to give us a follow on Twitter and you can see uh, when we're doing anything. But for now, Thank you for joining this another chapter of our adventurous tale. And we will see you all next week for whatever this is. See you then. <laughs>